Welcome Stadium as the St. Xavier Bombers and the Wayne Warriors are preparing to play in the 1999-08 SAA Football Playoffs Division I. We say that we're back because we were here last year as the Bombers went all the way to the state finals. I'm Dave Eby, and I'm joined this evening by Dave Bean, who's going to give us a recap of last week's game, and that's why the Bombers are here. Thanks, Dave, and uh, welcome to all the loyal fans out there of Waycross Community Media. Last week, the Bombers opened their defense, really, of their uh, Southern Ohio Championship in the quarterfinals of the region against Moeller. That uh, was, had, of course, the, the two teams that played earlier in the year with Xavier winning in 21-19 in the closest game of the, of the season for the Bombers. And a lot of people expected that to be the same kind of game. But the Bombers had other plans. They upset that, that, that anticipation by starting fast as Steve Solman ripped off 65 yards on the second play of the game. Two plays later, he dove into the end zone. He fumbled the ball, but recovered his own fumble for the first of his three rushing TDs. On the ensuing kickoff, Moeller fumbled, and Xavier took over on the Moeller 37. Moeller's defense stiffened and, and forced Xavier to try a 37-yard field goal, which kicker will catch the national anthem now. week's game you ought to uh, it's a shame because you missed a great game we've got a couple interviews here before the game Dave with uh, the head coaches of the respective teams and first off uh, is Jay Minton the new uh, coach at Wayne he's uh, just in his second year there at Wayne so let's go to those interviews now okay this is Dave Bean I'm down here on the sidelines before the game with uh, Wayne's head coach Jay Minton Jay, uh, this is your, just your second year here at Wayne, and uh, you already are 18 and three. Uh, that's pretty impressive. What do you attribute that to? Well, you know, I, I inherited a program that was very successful. Uh, Mike Snyder and uh, uh, had a long tradition of, of being very successful here. The one thing, one quality that, that the program hadn't had yet was that we hadn't won a playoff game yet in the history of school, and, and uh, we were fortunate enough to do that last week. So, uh, you know, we're just from here, we're trying to teach these kids how to play in playoff games and playoff situations, and hopefully we can uh, be in a situation where we make a run down, you know, towards the final. Since this is your first playoff game, has this done anything in, around school, anything special around school? Well, our, our fans are going crazy. I mean, we got, you know, I, I know some people were contradicted, but we got some fantastic fans and maybe some of the best around. And, and uh, so they're, they're kind of football feverish anyway, you know, in the fall. So, um, you know, it's always exciting at Wayne High School, you know, on a Friday night. But uh, um, this just adds some added flavor to it. What about your kids? Do they are they bothered by going up against the St. Xavier that's got a long playoff record? Does that does that create any special problems for you? Just the, the mental aspect, you know, and hopefully we've taken care of a little bit of that. And, and that that we can't tell until we get out on the field and kick it off. But, um, you know, our kids, we've got some veteran kids out there and um, not veteran in the playoff system, but but some veteran, uh, uh, some great experience and everything. Hopefully they'll handle it well. Ernest Tucker uh, appears to be your leading rusher on the season. And uh, his yardage this year uh, would tend to compare him pretty favorably with Steve Solman from uh, St. Xavier. You've seen Solman on, on film. How would you 
you compare these two ball players? Well, you know, Steve, I mean, Zolman uh, is just fantastic running back. I mean, you know, uh, you know, I thought we saw a real good one last week in Fairfield's uh, um, Earl Haynes, and, and man, he's just, I mean, Zolman does it all. He catches the ball, you know, a complete package, it seems like. So, Ernest, uh, um, he's getting there, you know, and he, he's almost there. He's a senior, and um, last year he was in a shadow of another player, but um, hopefully, you know, he'll, you know, have a good night. Your defense has uh, been holding your opponents to less than 300 yards a game uh, on, on average. And uh, uh, last week, Xavier rushed for well over 400, almost 500 yards. Did you create any problem? Did you have to do any? Have you done anything special? Well, you know, coming into tonight's game, I mean, obviously, I think when you go against Xavier, you have to say that you're going to try to stop number 44. And if you can slow him down or something, I don't know what, what the secret is there, but but I think you've got to take that away from him. If you if you can uh, put a kink in that system and make him throw, I know they can throw well, but but I think you got a chance. Okay, well, we're going to go back to the action now and we're going to take it back upstairs. Th good luck to you, Coach. Thanks very much, guys. Dave, great job there with head coach Jay Minton. And uh, let's get back a little bit to last week's game, and then I'll have some other announcements that uh, kind of affect state playoff situations here. But, you know, uh, like you said, the Bombers got off to a fast start, but then that, that field goal by Nolan was incredibly important for them. Yes, it was. And uh, the, at the start of the third quarter, uh, the, the, the Crusaders came out and, and just ripped up the field. It, it took the ball, drove right down, put the ball in the end zone, and, and a lot of people considered, well, maybe Moeller's going to make a big comeback. In fact, Xavier didn't slow up one bit. They turned right around, returned, uh, the, and, and, and drove down for their own, their own touchdown and never let up from that point on until the fourth quarter. And then Moeller was down by... by uh, it was 49-14, and some substitutions started to be made. Moeller brought it back, I think, to about 49-32. But, yeah. but really, for a large part of that game, I think a lot of people sitting in that stadium were like, if this ball club plays like this, they're going to go a long way. I would agree. I think that uh, Steve Solman... Uh, had one of those nights that everybody kind of dreams of against a, a quality team like Moeller. Uh, he had a he had a huge night, not only scoring three of his own, but throwing for another one. So you know th this is a, this was a great game. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. You talked to Steve Rasso here a little bit ago, Dave. Let's uh, let's see what you found out from Coach Rasso. This is Dave Eby. I'm here with head coach Steve Rasso. Steve, congratulations. What's it like to be back in the playoffs? Well, Dave, uh, first of all, thank you, and uh, it's great to be back in here. I mean, this is our goal, uh, one of our goals we have every year. One is, uh, of course, to uh, win the league championship. Uh, the other one is to uh, be city champs, uh, go undefeated, and uh, make it to the playoffs and get through the playoffs. So we're, we are on schedule right now. A very difficult schedule for the Bombers this year. You've brought them through a 10-0. What's the key to victories tonight for St. Xavier? Well, Wayne, uh, they are a fast team. Uh, they got some tremendous athletes. Two of their players have already committed to Ohio State, and uh, they throw the ball. You're going to see a lot of widespread. Uh, they'll be all over. And uh, plus the running game, they got a good running back, but I think they're going to try and get the uh, passing game uh, in that area. But uh, there's no question uh, the speed factor is the thing we have to control tonight. On the offensive side, you've had a great offensive year. Some games, high 40s, even a 50-point game. 30 points against a, a difficult elder team. What do you credit the success on the offense to? Well, there's no question about that, Dave. Uh, I would say right now it would be Marty Mooney. And what I mean by that, uh, Steve Solman is one of the premier uh, running backs in the state. And I think we have three of the top receivers in the state, and, uh, uh, Larkin, uh, Arling, and uh, Larson. Uh, Larson being uh, with Mono right now, not playing. Bunning steps right in there, and we don't lose much at all. In fact, uh, kept, kept right up going. But uh, with those people, and uh, you know, with the quarterback situation being a question mark early in the year, uh, Marty stepped up, and uh, you know, if you got great receivers that can't get the ball to them, you know, they're not going to be very good for you. They could, they would be, uh, teams we play could stop just a running game by itself. So him coming through uh, with the people we had surrounding him uh, has made really has been the really a success. Plus the offensive line, we you know we have five out of five, we have four hundred class in there and they have come through and uh, I think in the last couple games we've been able to get the holes and plus the protection for Marty to throw the ball. A few changes in that offensive line Steve really brought about as you said some major gains on the defensive side of the ball Brian Heisman 
Eric Streit and the four seniors in that defensive secondary really do a great job with the push up front from Ross and uh, Jeremy Smith. It, it just sounds like a total ball club for the Bombers this year, offensively and defensively. Well, the defense, no question. We, we thought we had a good defense coming in with the experience we had from last year. And, uh, you know, the heart of our defense isn't a bill, as you mentioned, uh, was Scheidt and uh, uh, Heisman. But uh, our secondary, I think, is one of the best we've had around X for a while. And the uh, people up front have really made it. You know, with Jeremy Smith and Ross and uh, Rosing in there, uh, they, they can't. It's hard to block them one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And uh, yeah, they just move, and they move, and the quickness is really a big factor that's helped our defense. Well, Steve, it's not just about what's on the field. A lot of your ball players are big buddies, big brothers. They're involved in service. We've had a couple schools out talking about the kids as role models, and I think that comes from the head coach down. So congratulations to you, not just on your season, but on molding these men into men of character, and good luck tonight. Well, thank you very much, Dave. Appreciate we'll be back up in the booth after these messages. Well, Dave, you can see both teams have come out, and the pregame posturing's begun as the Wayne Warriors on the far sideline are going to run through their large sign, and uh, head coach Steve Brasso has his bombers ready. Statistically, these teams match up real well with running and passing. Yeah, they really do. I think that I, I think that the impression I get though from uh, just watching the Wayne team warming up here this evening and listening to some conversations that I had with some coaches I know in the Dayton area, I get the impression that Wayne is going to lean toward the pass. They don't feel that they are quite as uh, uh, adept on the ground. I was looking at uh, the comparative rushing yardage, Tucker. Uh, for uh, Wayne has gained uh, 1,080 yards and he scored 17 TDs. Solomon is over 2,000 yards with 15 TDs, but Wayne spreads it around. I don't think there's a single kid you can key on with, with Wayne. Uh, Jones, their quarterback, has thrown 22 times for touchdowns this year and 1,600 yards. Mooney's got uh, 170, uh, 1,759 yards and 21 TDs. So, yeah, they throw about the same. This could be a really exciting game, Dave. Tonight could come down to who's going to have field position. Both yes. teams can prove that they can move the ball. The one yes. thing that we saw last week, Dave, was every time Moeller scored, St. X came right back and scored, and we've seen that all year long, that 50-point game against Cleveland St. Ignatius. Every time the Wildcats tried to get back into it, the Bombers just jumped and moved right down the field. Yeah, and, and another thing, Dave, uh, that, that isn't, isn't going to appear perhaps in this kickoff situation, but when St. Xavier kicks off. Xavier's kickoffs are denying the other team any chance to run back. And that really played havoc with Moeller. Moeller started out every possession at his own 20-yard line last time. And we're lining up the kick now, Dave, as John McClain, number 18, puts it down for the Wayne Warriors. Jeff Buning, who will be starting in place of Nick Larson, who is again injured and out this evening, back with Michael Larkin and Steve Solman. And a lot of people just kick this ball short, and the Bombers sometimes get good field position. Well, they should. Larkin's got two touchdowns on kickoffs this year. That's uh, not a bad idea. And Solman averages about 28 yards return. If they can That's get the Larkin wall set the up, he can go. And Michael Larkin with a 19-yard return out to about the St. Xavier 24-yard line. Dave, that's pretty good coverage for Wayne as the Bombers usually move it out past the 30. We're going to see this on uh, replay here. You see Larkin gathering the ball in. They've got a good blocking. Uh, there's a lot of good blocking up ahead of him, but Wayne fights through those blocks, and there's uh, number 71 for the uh, Warriors come slashing in there to get the first hit. Anthony and Golligan. Anthony Goliganoff. That's a heck of a name. That's a We're going to have to really work <laughs> on that one as we go. I hope he isn't a, a, a major linebacker, Dave. That's all I can say. <laughs> the Bomber regular backfield with sophomore Marty Mooney. We'll talk about him in a minute. Steve Solman in the deep position. Tim Harrington is up close. There's Wide Solman. receivers are Michael Larkin. Solman trying to get outside, and Steve Solman's going to pick up about four yards on the play to the 29-yard line where he's dragged down by one of the Wayne linebackers. Yeah, it, look, it looks like they have a monster running with, with Solman, and, and uh, Coach Minton said that at the outset of the game. He said, we have to slow Solman down. That's number two. That's uh, Carl Hay Hayden, uh, defensive back, actually, that came up there on the corner. That's a patented Xavier play right there, that, that pitch, that deep pitch to uh, Solman. Let him pick his, uh, his zone and, and take off with it. Two wide outs. 
Hand off to Solman, who's going to try to come up the middle, and he's dropped in the backfield, and that's a big play for the Wayne Warriors right there as Steve Solman is going to lose about three yards on the play, and that'll make it about third and eight. It's Ben McLaughlin you're going to see coming in here. He beats his man on the inside. Comes across behind the pulling guard and comes in and slips into the, the backfield and drops uh, uh, Steve Solman for a loss. Now, Randy Newsom and Jeff Buning have checked into the lineup. Michael Larkin, number seven, going far on the wide side. Marty Mooney, a sophomore. And you'll certainly hear a lot about him as his maturity has marked the rise of the St. Xavier Bomber team. Solomon There's stays in the backfield. Mooney hit behind the line of scrimmage, and the back judge rules an incomplete pass as Marty Mooney got stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Billy Hackett. Hackett coming through. Billy Hackett on the uh, on the blitz. He's coming from his outside linebacker position. Slides right in behind uh, Mooney and knocks his uh, knocks the ball loose as the start out. Well, the Bombers for the first time are going to have to punt on the first series, Dave. St. Xavier usually does not get the ball to start the game, and that's exactly what the Wayne Warriors wanted to do. Matt Mervis, who only punted once last week, gets a nice high punt here heading back, and that's John Hollins. Hollins is a dangerous back. Nick Lyle, along with number 37, Blake Jones, getting down there quickly for the Bombers. Also be on the 37 yard line, 38 yard line for the Warriors. So let, you're going to see this punt coming down here, and the Bombers have to really knock it around number three, John Hollins, who can really go. And Dave, now let's see loop. what the Warriors do here. As we said, we're but we're expecting some pass. They mix it up real well. Their quarterback six four. Flanker out um, on the right. The slot over here spread out pretty well. Drop back to pass. Tucker on the drop back. Shy can't get him. Ferguson coming on. Heisman with the coverage over the middle. Works on John Hollins. Hollins wanted the flag thrown. Brian Heisman covering well. It'll be second and ten. You're going to see Tucker drop back here, number no, that's, 13. It's Jones. Or Jones. Derek excuse Jones. me, Derek Jones. Right. Yeah, Derek Jones. And Jones will fire this one out. Heisman covering Hollins on the play. Tucker's the fullback, number yeah. five. He's in He's the deep slot. Rusher too, yeah. St. X, the front three, Rosing, Ross, and Sec Smith put a lot of pressure on. Second down for the Warriors. There's, There's Tucker. Tucker on the carry. Straight up the middle. Looks like Keith Rosing underneath, along with Pat Ross in on the play. It's a gain of about two yards, Dave. It'll be about third and eight. We're going to see this one again, Dave. You're going to see. Uh, we're going to see how these lines match up in here. Watch Brian Heisman, number 36, try to fill Heisman. that hole right there. Oh, there's a big but number, tackle, number 79, 79 made the good block, and that's why it was important that Rosing was down underneath. Keep that's your eyes on Heisman and Scheidt, the two leading tacklers. That's 285-pound Mike Padilla for the Warriors. It was on Heisman that time. Good oh, pressure. He does get it off. Good Jones by Derek Jones, who got it to Tucker. Tucker trying to get that first down. And let's see where the mark is made. It looks like he's going to be wrapped up about the 47 by Nick Lyle, number 28. And that'll make it fourth and two. Let's see if we get this one on replay here. We're going to see Tucker slide out of the back, out of the backfield on this. this there he, there's Tucker getting the ball. He's, this kid's tough. He runs hard. There's one, two, three backs. Shy Xavier's hit. Stall. Kids have hit him. Not good tackling right here. Lyle finally made the tackle. Jeremy Smith, the nose tackle coming back. And Dave, we'll come back to that tackling because that's what happened to let the Moeller Crusaders get back into the game. The Bombers just this, not wrapping. This is Bobby Long in punt formation for the Warriors. Joe Stevens pulled off of that one, and that and punt's going to go out of bounds. Let's see where they bring line. it up here. Looks Ooh, like the head official is going to come up to about the 26 yard line. 26, 27, 27 yard line, it looks like. So both teams stopped on their first offensive efforts. And with 8.46 remaining in the first quarter, it's St. Xavier 0 and Wayne 0. The Bombers with a five yard carry and then uh, a loss, and, and they had a long third down. Good pressure from Wayne. Let's see if they try to loosen it up here. Offensive coordinator Bobby Klotz really likes to script well, a, a set of plays to open it up, Dave, and let's see what he's calling here. Well, this is really spread out. 
Mooney's going to roll. Mooney's got a wide receiver. That's Eric Arling, number 89, who's heading to Kentucky. And Arling brings it up to the 31-yard line, and that'll be a pickup of about five yards, second and five. Last week, Arling was such a dominant factor in that Moeller game. He's so big and dominated the Moeller defensive backs. Here we're going to see it again. Xavier's got uh, the field really spread wide and deep. Uh, Solomon was really deep in that alignment. Again, Arling comes in there, bounces off one tackler, and drives forward, crossing to the about the 31-yard line. It'll be second down for the Bombers. Adam Bodenmiller on the stop. Sometimes the Bombers run a shovel Shot pass down. out of here. Just a quick handoff Solman to Steve Solman. Breaks two tackles. Solman will bring it up to about the 35, and St. X is going to look at third and one. Nice job by the linebacking crew there. That's numbers. Billy Hackett, you'll see, come in here for the the uh, Warriors uh, right there number six gets in and, and gets the hit on Solman but Solman picks up about uh, four yards on that brings a third and two for lots of nice pressure here Dave from the Wayne Warriors as they're bringing men in and St. Xavier's offensive line is going to have to watch the stunning they're filling the gaps. It's a handoff to Solman inside who breaks it outside. He's got the first down and a few more. And Steve Solman is finally knocked down near the sidelines by number 26, Ashton Watson. That uh, 44 defense that the Warriors are using can get him into trouble here because they do blitz. Uh, every down they blitz. And if Solman catches him in a blitz and rolls it outside, he does just what he does here. Picks up the first down Part of the on the Xavier 41-yard line. We talked before the game about the DBs, uh, two Division I defensive backs for the Wayne Warriors, and so they can't afford to blitz. That's about a six-yard pickup for Steve Solman off the completion from Marty Mooney. Dave, Marty's a, a sophomore, but uh, since that first game against Moeller, he played in the Cathedral game, and then since then, this kid looks like a, a veteran quarterback back there. Well, I'll tell you what, you would have a you would have a very difficult time convincing someone that has never seen Xavier play that Marty Mooney is a sophomore when they walk in the stadium and watch him take charge. He's, he's really a dominating personality on the field. Exactly. A ton of poise. He's worked with his father on getting down, you know, how to read and how to just be patient. Steve Solman's going to pick up about two yards before he's finally knocked down there by Carl Hayden. And, Dave, it looks like Bobby Klotz is making the, the adjustment of just taking what Wayne's willing to give him right now and try to pick up a few first downs. I would say that's exactly the case. Uh, I think it's a matter of uh, let's not get greedy. We aren't going to – so we are going to rip it off. We've got, a, we've got a long way to go. Let's get control of the ball. Don't give it to Wayne. I, I think that's a, a really important thing because they do have a very powerful passing attack. Both teams can move the ball down the field. St. Xavier and Wayne, offensive machines. Wayne scored 78 points in a game earlier this year. Steve Solman with second carry. effort. Let's see where the mark is here. Pretty close. As Brian Antke, number 43, gets in there. And it is marked as a first down, down so that's about that's a three-yard pickup. good personal up. effort on Steve Solman's part right here. Again, the Wayne defenders are really playing well. The, the, the line play at this point, the uh, Wayne, Wayne ball, uh, defensive linemen are playing extremely well and giving the Xavier Bombers uh, offensive crew uh, a great deal to think about here. Kyle Ralph and Jeremy Imbus were two substitutions that put four juniors or underclassmen on that line. And since then, the Bombers have run off some big games. And Solman's going to go inside gonna down to about, about the 44, four. about four yards, second and six. Dave, let's set that offensive line. Eric Arling's number 89. Chris Fessel's number 77. Kevin Hodap is number 78. And at center is number 72, Kyle Ralph. Coming the right guard is Rob Wall, number 75, and the right tackle is Jeremy Imbus. We've already set Jeff Buning, Steve Solman, and Michael Larkin as the wide receivers. Pass to Solman, he's on a quick run, and a great pickup there by number 42, one-on-one -on, -one on Solman. Brian Acne again on the stop. And 51 uh, was uh, in on that uh, Adam Miller. Uh, St. X looks like it's trying to get the ball into the hands of Steve Solman. Let him break one. A nice block by Jeff Buning. But Anke comes right in one-on-one, -on -one, and Solman's not easy to bring down. Third and about four yards to go from the 43-yard line. An important down here for St. X. Solman's going to go in motion. They like to throw across the middle on this play. Blitz. Mooney's going to have to get it across oh, the middle. Intercepted. intercepted by number 51. He's got one man to beat. 
as Marty Mooney just couldn't get enough on it, and Adam Bodenmiller steps up and makes a great interception. And Mooney Solman. did a great job just to get rid of that it's, ball. It's Solman, it's Solman that comes in here and gets the tackle to save the to save the Xavier Bombers from being uh, scored on here. That's that, that ball was in, intended for uh, Arsman. It looked ball. like Eric Arling, yeah, number Arling. 89. Solman comes back out there also on the play was number 77, Chris Fessel. And Wayne Warriors with a big opportunity here at the St. Xavier blitz. 43. That was a huge blitz that uh, came in there for the uh, Warriors. Tucker they on the carry. That, caused that uh, bad pass by uh, Marty Mooney. Looks like St. Xavier offensively, Dave, when they go to five wideouts, are, are really going to have to get the ball out quickly yep. because of this blitz on every play. Good job yep. inside there by Smith, Rosing, and Heisman and Scheidt fill in the hole. Gain of three, second and seven. That was Tucker on the carry. The Warriors bring three wideouts here. Number seven is Tyrone Hogan. Number 14 is Bobby Long. And number three is John Hollins. There's a little flare. Derek Jones oh, is the quarterback. That, little flare outside. That was a dangerous play out there. That ball intended for uh, I think that was seven, Hogan. Uh, Tyrone Hogan, who is the leading receiver on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, the Warriors squad. Right through his hands. There. I think he saw Chris Stahl, number 48, Chris Stahl right in his face. I, I, I think he saw him out of the corner of his eye. Nickel package in here, Dave, as Blake Jones checks into the game. Uh, Paul Coons and Joe Stevens are marking up real close. Nick Lyle and Chris Stahl comes out here into the slot. As Jones goes back into. Here comes the blitz out of the ball. Oh, they picked it up. They got one on one down the middle. And that ball's overthrown. A good job coming across there for St. Xavier. Number 31 was the strong safety, Pat Kelly. One on one coverage, Will and that's Allen. what Wayne wants, right? Yeah, that's right. Will Allen uh, streaking down the right sideline is well covered, and the ball is overthrown. But uh, that. that uh, that shows where they want to go. They eat up huge chunks of yardage. They're a big play team, uh, apparently, based on uh, the numbers of first downs and, and such as they get in, in games. It's the same as Xavier. Xavier doesn't get a lot of first downs because they rip off such huge chunks of yardage. Wayne seems to have been the same same way. Block it. Punt coming up. Joe Stevens again pulled off. That Larkin's going to let that one go in check the into the end zone. end zone. That's a nice punt of about 42 yards yep. for number 14, Bobby Long. He hung it up there. He did his job. And uh, I think the little, we, we said we had a strong wind coming across, and that may have pulled it in there, Dave. Yeah, I think, I think you're right because the wind is blowing away from the scoreboard uh, toward the end zone that Xavier is defending at this point. You got the feeling that this crowd here is just waiting for one of these teams to rip off one of those characteristic big plays. Yep. It may be a little more difficult because both the teams have strong defensive backs. Wayne with two defensive backs who are already signed Division One, and St. X with a veteran crew back there. Mooney going to roll out. He's got plenty of time. He's got Buning open deep. And he'll hit number number 80. I, could, I couldn't see it. They, and I believe he was out of bounds there. It's either out of bounds or it bounces. Mm -hmm. oh. I think he stepped out of bounds on the near sideline. Jeff Buning had a step deep, but then he came back, and it looked like and it looked yeah, like he was good. looking there for yeah. number 80, Brad Growie is Growie. Right on the right on the sideline. Growie was open, yep. just didn't know where he was on the sideline there, so the Bombers will be faced with second and 10. A nice rollout to give him a little bit of time. Good coverage by the Wayne Warrior defense. Solman back, four men out. Hand off to uh, Tommy Perazzo was in the deep position. Correction, as Solman went out into the slot, and Perazzo is dropped there by number 43, Brian Ankney. He's the leading tackler on this Wayne team, Dave. This uh, Brian Acne, he's uh, he's been a very dominant uh, personality on the field. He's uh, plays that inside linebacker, and, and obviously they, they, that's the intention. You turn guys like that loose, and and uh, they get in the action, and cause this havoc in the other teams. Bomber fans attack. may see something a little bit different here, as Nick Larson not playing tonight, so Steve Solman goes into the slot. Buning open down the middle for the first down and can't hang on as Jeff Buning is drilled by number four, Will Allen. 
and that might be the difference between Jeff Buning and Nick Larson as Larson is a little bit taller and the Bombers are again forced to punt. So this offensive shootout that we thought we may see right now has turned into a strong defensive battle as number 15, Matt Mervis, will go back to punt and this will be more punts than he made all last week. Yes. Mervis yes. sometimes takes, takes a while getting the punt off and Wayne's got 10 men up, Dave. They're coming. They've had a couple guys. They had guys in there on the last uh, series, last punt. Had good pressure on. And I call that one it. as Mervis. Yeah, you sure the bomber's did. head, and that's a, that's touchdown, a touchdown, touchdown for the Wayne Warriors that's a touchdown. by number four, Will Allen. Tom Perazzo took the short man coming the short distance, and Matt Mervis just took too long, and Will Allen could have almost just taken the ball off his foot. We'll see this one again on the replay as the Bombers on the left side do nothing, and Mervis way too long getting that punt off. Will it's Allen right came all his, the way right from, his foot. from the far side to block that one and take it in, and the Carl, Wayne Warriors Carl take Hayden a 6 0 lead. Block. Hayden got the block, and Allen, Allen picks up the ball for the, for the score. That was pretty impressive. Uh, pretty impressive. You called it, Dave, because they were coming, and they had been close the first time around. Well, this McLean's puts a, kick this puts Xavier in is a up and good. Situation. This is something they haven't, uh, Xavier hasn't been in this situation in quite a while, have they, Dave? The Bombers have always responded when another team scores to come back down the field and score on the next possession, and they have been behind, I believe, twice this year, but not very long. Generally, it takes them about three-fourths of this first quarter to get going, and then they usually dominate, but the Wayne Warrior defensive scheme right now has this St. Xavier offense just a bit stymied. They're, they're pulling and poking a little bit, but those good defensive backs are making them earn every inch, and a great block there, and that brought the Wayne crowd to their feet. We warned, you know, we talked about sometimes that you don't want to look ahead, and right now the Wayne Warriors with a 7-0 lead are looking exactly very strong. That's exactly what I was going to say. I asked uh, Coach Minton at, uh, of Wayne uh, if playing Xavier made any, you know, was doing anything to his kids. And, and you know, obviously he's going to say no, but at the same time, it's got to do something to Xavier because who's who's Wayne? You know, they're used to getting ready to play the Molers and the, and the Cole Rains and uh, the Kent McKinleys. It's a lot different, but this is a, a new kid on the block, and they're, they're I think the the Bombers are a little bit back on their heels now. We're going to have to see we're going to have to see what uh, what they can do here, whether they can come back. John McLean to kick off here for the Wayne Warriors, and yeah, we're going to have to see what St. Xavier comes up with here. They've been in this situation before. They're a veteran team. And this can only bring out the character that you're looking for in a team. So Wayne scores first on a block punt coming all the way across the field. Larkin's got Larkin some room this the time. The five. A little bit slow getting the, the yeah, wedge going the there. St. X has really got to move off that wedge. Larkin's got to tell him to move to faster. The, just barely the 21-yard line. Dave, they had plenty of time there. It just looks like they didn't explode out of there. As Watch this play come down. Both lines are there. And Larkin's almost on the line yeah, by the time they move forward the, the block. He's almost into the backs of his blockers by the time the Wayne guys are there. Wayne, Xavier was supposed to like the, the turf because they're quick. But uh, Wayne has shown itself to be quick. Steve Rasso said that the Wayne Warriors were the fastest team the Bombers had faced this year, and right now they're showing him that. It's first and 10, St. X. Solman going to try to get outside, and up. he's knocked behind the line by number 43, Brian Acne. And Acne is playing a great game here tonight, as that's a loss of one. Brian Acne is a, a nightmare right now for the Bombers. Watch Solman cut through, and Acne just hits into that hole, and he's. They're well scouted, this St. Xavier offense, as Acne has really been a problem for the St. Xavier blocking scheme. Number 11, that's Randy Newsom, one of the vice presidents of student council who checks into the game. And the Bombers are going to bring Larkin, Buning, and Newsom. Looks like a blitz coming from the far side, and here they come. Mooney hands off to Michael Larkin. Larkin on the far sideline, on the run, picks up about six yards, at five yards, six yards, maybe out to about the 23, 24 yard line. It'll be third and about seven. This, uh, this uh, Wayne football team is playing itself right now in the first quarter about as well as anybody could ever hope to play. They're doing everything right. They've been in the right place again and again. Their blitzes are working. Their offense has been not dynamic yet, but the, it has been moving. And most of all, they're outquicking Xavier at this point. Exactly. They're just 
beating St. Xavier to the ball right now. And you know when you hold Fairfield to 14 points, you've got to have something going with Haynes. They're big, but there's a flag on the play. It looked like the Bombers were moving. Mooney just dumps that one off, and that'll be an incompletion. And right now, the Wayne Warrior defensive line is winning the battle of the trenches. There is a penalty marker on the near sidelines. Good snap back to Mooney. Mooney's going to come back, and he's just going to be drilled <laughs> by the blitzing linebacker. And Marty Mooney showing a lot of class here for a sophomore. There was a legal motion whistled against St. Xavier. A shift against Xavier. That's going to be declined, and it'll be third down and about eight. And right now, fourth down. Fourth down, and the Wayne Warriors have held again, and the St. Xavier Bombers, and the Bombers are going to have to come on and punt. They're in a worse position this time than they were in the last time. And they're punting uh, into the wind. Yes. You know, St. Xavier wanted to defend this goal, I think, and get the wind behind their back uh, in the second and fourth quarters. Look at this time, St. Xavier shifted again, that line. It looks, like, made it that looks shift. like most of Wayne is on his way. I noticed the bomber staying inside. Coming again, Mervis this time gets it off, and that's a nice driving punt, but Hollins is going to field it at about his 32-yard line. Good coverage by the And bombers. great coverage as Eric coverage. Arling makes the solo tackle first. Arling down there, and then right with him is Robbie Hamburg. Dave, that's a, about a 44-yard punt for Mervis. He got that one off, making up for the block punt. And watch Arling come right in here. There's Arling coming in and, and, and with a lot of blue shirts coming up very quickly. Robbie Hamburg, Nick Lyle joining in as well. Dave, I was looking at the, uh, at the size of the players that uh, Wayne is putting on the field against the Bombers defensively. And they're not, they're not big. They're 200, 215 pounds, 225 pounds. They're not putting big guys out there, but those guys are quick. Derek Jones quarterbacking St. X. The defense is going to have to hold now as they do not want to go down two scores. That's a nice pass out here, but a little bit of a mix-up as it looked like Hollins was going to try to beat Stevens on the sideline pattern, but then he cut inside. Yeah, it's it, that's a read call, I'm sure. And uh, the, Jones reads it one way, and his receiver read it a different. And <laughs> the result was an overthrown pass. You but he took a three-step drop there, too. You it, said that Jay Minton was going to throw the ball, Dave, and he's staying with that pass right now. Yeah. Well, I don't think that he feels that he, he's got the, the horsepower to run a lot. I think he's got to run there. He's going to run. Tucker on the Tucker carry on there. The carry. Eric Scheidt Tucker, makes the tackle. Tucker's averaged about, uh, well, I forget now. Uh, we have, we have his, about 1,700 yards for the year. Yeah, he, has a, he has about 1,800 yards, but his uh, his average has been up in the in the eight yards per game average, and uh, or, or per per run, and uh, he hasn't gotten off anything long at this point. But then, of course, neither has uh, Steve Sullivan or anybody else. Right, defense has taken over the first quarter of this game as the Wayne Warriors have a 7-0 lead via a block punt deep in Bomber territory. That was the final play of the first quarter. And Dave, I think your, your response about the quickness of this Wayne defense is playing right into what Steve Rasso said. He was worried about the speed of the Wayne Warriors. I, I, again, Dave, I, I still think that there's a psychological thing at work here too. Xavier uh, doesn't look like it's really convinced that Wayne's for real. And uh, they ought to begin to get the message at this point. You can kind of see, look at the faces here on the sideline. The, 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 the attitude of the, of, the, of the kids just isn't, I, I don't know. I may be reading more into it than, the, than there is. But at this point, I think Xavier has got to be surprised. I think so. I, I, we talked about the fact that if the Warriors got off to a lead, that would really do a lot for their confidence. If St. Xavier came right down the field and scored, Wayne may panic a little bit. Now they've got a quarter underneath their belt, and they're saying we can stay with these guys. Third down, about seven to go. Let's see if Heisman or Scheidt comes on the blitz. Scheidt trying to find a hole. He's picked up. Screen pass, and Eric Scheidt oh, was right there coverage. to hit John Great Hollins. Great job by Scheidt. Great, great defensive effort by Scheidt on this, on this play, Dave. That, that's really superior. Watch the quarterback here, number 13, Derek Jones. He gets this nice read, and Hollins 
I think Collins did a good thing dropping the ball there so they didn't take a loss on the play. The St. Xavier faithful, Dave, are responding to what you said, and that basically was the idea that, you know, this team has to pick it up psychologically and emotionally. I think that it's going to have to come out of the linebacking core, too. Uh, I, I, they're going to they need a couple really great, great defensive plays here. A, a, an INT at this point would be good. Although Jones has not thrown a lot of interceptions, and uh oh. And the Bombers comes really the flag. claim that time, and Joe Stevens, number 21, is going to be whistled, I believe, for roughing the kicker. Yep, that's yep. absolutely the case. Joe, he got him. We're going to see this. We saw that up here. Joe Stevens should have just flattened himself out to the ball, Dave. Instead, he runs through it and hits the man. Yep, that's a, that's a critical mistake. Now, that is going to result be, in a Wayne gonna, first down. Yes, it is. You, you called it right on the Wayne block. They went for the ball coming off the foot, and Stevens just jumped in instead of across. He had the line, but made uh, the jump took, the wrong his, his way. Angle was, his angle was too deep. Uh, you know, he didn't go flat enough on that angle. You shoot for where that ball is going to be, and he shot a little bit to where he, you know, it, it, it had been. And that uh, that resulted in the in the penalty. And it gives a first down to the let's Wayne see, Warriors. Let's see what kind of momentum up. shift happens here. The Bomber crowd was excited, and now this defense has to come back out as Wayne's right at midfield. First and 10, Wayne at the, on the 50-yard line. Wayne is doing everything right. Or they're getting there. At this point, they're having things work right for them. The Hall Bombers aren't out of it. We're still early in this ball game, but uh, Wayne is... Uh, Accounting for itself. Quite Tucker well. up the middle. Nice carry by Ernest Tucker. That's a good time to run, Tucker. Jeremy. Too. He's got the he's got the defense well spread out. If he had, if he had broken the line of scrimmage, uh, there were uh, the uh, the defensive backs were really skewed over to cover the wide wide outs. Trips on that play and Tucker picks up about three yards. It'll be third or second and seven. The ball now inside St. Xavier territory as Jeremy Smith stuck a big paw out there on that tackle. Now, this is the first time that Wayne has been inside Xavier territory, even though they lead 7-0. Uh, we have to point out, uh, Dave, that uh, Tyrone, yeah, Tyrone Hogan there on the flanker play. And again, St. Xavier stopping that run, but that's a pickup of two. It'll be third and five. Steve Solman being taped on the sideline there. We certainly need him in the ball game tonight as the Bombers are down 7-0. And right now this defense is being tested. I, we had a question earlier, you know, last week talking about the offense has scored so many points. Has the defense gotten a little lackadaisical? And now the defense is going to have to change momentum here for the Bombers. Yep. you got to step up at this point. That's a hackneyed phrase, I know, but another overthrown pass. Derek Jones. Jones. Pass well out of bounds. Good coverage on the play. So it'll be fourth and five, and this time you got to think the Bombers may work on the return. Another thing, Dave, Wayne so far has taken away something that no one else has been able to take away from St. X, and that's the big play by the special teams with Steve Solman and Michael Larkin, a very dangerous crew returning punts. Well, the, uh, the, the Bombers uh, have got to, uh, th they really need a big play at this point. They've got to do something to change the momentum because right now, Wayne is convinced that it can it can knock him off. We were here last year when Upper Arling took a 14 to 0 lead and then St. Xavier got down to business. Won that game. Oh, fake oh punt. the great fake punt here. Nice call and, and a, a missed tackle down. and that's going to pick up the first down as Bobby Long. What a great play by Jay Minton as Bobby Long, a flanker, takes the first down down to about the 35-yard line. You know, Dave, I saw this. I saw this in their statistics. Well, that's a bad snap, but Long has, uh, I was noticing in their, in their stat sheet, Long has a lot of rushing yardage. And I, I figured, well, they were using flanker reverses and everything, but maybe they've run this, uh, this, this punt a couple times, too. That's a pickup of about 10 yards. Brian Heisman had to make the stop. Matt Ziegler had the wrong angle there. He was coming in for the block, and Long just shedded him and takes the first down. That's so the Warriors, 35. with 10 minutes left to go in the second quarter, are threatening to score. Hollins tries to come up the middle, and he's just grabbed by Brian Heisman, who's not going to let go. Or correction, that was Tyrone Hogan who yeah, came that through. Was Hogan. We're going to see the handoff here. This is the second time they've run this play to Hogan. Now they're going to bring it to the right side, and Heisman's just going to fill the hole and just make a great tackle. He wraps and then just moves backwards. 
one of the things that uh, is pretty impressive is that, uh, that uh, well, we'll get to it when we get to the defense. I just noticed a kid on the Wayne line that I didn't realize was out there until just now. But again, a shotgun formation. Pass over pass the, middle. the middle. Eric Scheid in on the stop as number three, John Hollins, takes that pass. It's going to gain about three yards. Oh, going to get a good mark, maybe down to the 29 yard line. It'll be third and about three yards, maybe four. Four and a half. Hollins met right there by Scheidt, and then Heisman comes in. It's going to be third and about four. St. Xavier was down to Moeller, 17 to three, and then was able to come back. Or correction, 17 to seven. Jones, quick drop. Jones looking, looking. Jones got, got plenty of time. time. Still plenty, plenty of time. time. Fires it over the middle. Incomplete. A great job by the Wayne offensive line, but a tremendous job by the St. Xavier secondary. Good coverage, but not much pressure up front. Well, now does he go for the field goal, which would be a 46-yarder, and that's that's a heck of a foot. Kevin Kerr could do it, but I'm thinking here that... His long has only been about 27 yards this year. Well, he's bringing in number four, Will Allen, and number 14, Bobby Long. Allen goes both ways, and Long's a flanker, so it looks like they're going to try for this first down via maybe a short slant pass, and Jones is going to go into the shotgun formation. Two wideouts on each side. There was movement in the line there. Jones, Jones trying to pick up the first down. Scampers through. He's going to get the first down and more as he's finally dropped by St. Xavier's number 31, Patrick Kelly. They had him behind the line and a good deal of scampering Stepped around. Out of, stepped out of two tackles in there. Watch Derek Jones here on the move. This is one of the tough things to do when you've got people spread out all over the field is to account for this guy right here. Shite and went a great down runner there. causes you trouble. Mike and Ferguson knocked off the play by one of his own men, and you're right, a great runner really does cause you trouble. Jones is a fine runner. He gets around really well in there. Very fast. We talked about his speed before the game, how yep. they can run the option. They're inside the red zone at the 19. The St. Xavier defense gives up yardage, but generally not a lot of points. Tucker just going to drive it right up the middle, and Ernest Tucker's going to take Blasted that ball there. down to about the 12 yard line or so, and that's going to be a pickup of about five, maybe six yards. Yep. And there was a good line surge that time. The uh, the Wayne offensive line had really good surge uh, and got into the Xavier defense, got into their bodies. And, and the, the key for a defender is to keep those guys off your body. Wayne's getting in there. It looks to me like the Wayne ball player, the, the offensive line tends to be pretty short. And they're getting in under. Hand off to Tucker. He breaks two tackles. Ernest Tucker trying to throw it in, and it's going to be first and goal down to the five-yard line. Tucker's as Ernest Tucker broke two, Dave. Yeah, Tucker has. Uh, Watch the, the hole open up there for Tucker and then the good line surge as the Wayne Warriors just were able to push it out. Pursuit is not uh, is not is not there either. The speed of the Wayne Warriors has offset the St. Xavier speed and the Warriors with the 7-0 lead are looking to put the Bombers in a critical situation here. Hand off to Tucker, Tucker inside. Nice middle. hold up the middle. He's going to go five he yards carries. and a Warrior touchdown. Ernest Tucker, number five, five yards and the score. It's a great run. Good blocking in here. There you see Jones's handoff. Look at the white bodies on the blue bodies. A nice hole, Dave, and they just sealed down, and Tucker very quickly fills through. And right now, the Wayne Warriors are really on top of St. X. The St. Xavier crowd is just a little bit stunned here as number 18, John McLean, takes the extra point. It looks good from here, and indeed it is good. And with seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half, it is the Wayne Warriors 14 and the St. Xavier Bombers zero. Dave, that's all Wayne gave up last week was 14 points. So the Bombers are going to have to make a response quickly here. That's right. This is, uh, th this is a, a very difficult point in time. And we're going to find out how 
determined the Xavier ball club's going to be. This is this is what marks champions, though, too, Dave. This is where the championship quality in, in people begins to show. This is where they step forward and say, "All right, we're going to take this over, and we're going to we're going to get this thing going again." If they didn't believe it before, they have to believe it now. The St. Xavier Bombers, this is the most they have been down all year long, and they need to respond as Michael Larkin is deep. Steve Solman and Jeff Buning are the upbacks. Well, this would certainly get the attention of people around the state uh, with Xavier uh, is ranked as highly as it has been all year. And uh, Wayne coming in here. Wayne's quieted the Xavier fans down. Exactly. This is quiet over here right now. Well, I, I think rightly so. I, I, the fans will probably get back in the game, but all week long, the coaches warned the St. Xavier Bombers about this. Buning's going to come up. Oh, and Buning fumbles. That was really tough because that ball came down in front of one of his blockers as Buning was trying to get to it. That was a that was a that was a tough play. That was a very difficult play for. Uh, Jeff uh, Buning. Matt Mervs, wasn't it? Number five. Isn't that? Uh-huh. So uh -huh. Buning was able to fall on it, but I'm, I'm surprised that he didn't tell the lineman to fire out. It just seems to be a lack of communication on those offensive kickoffs right now. Hand off inside to Tim Harrington. Harrington trying to break the tackle, and he'll roll forward for about two yards. But Brian Acne, number 43, is right there, and somebody's going to have to start blocking him. We've called his name all night, Dave. Let's number watch 43. the uh, offensive line in here. Let's see what, what's happening in here. There's too many people coming free. There's two white shirts without anybody touching them here. Buning's going to spread out wide right. Lark, Lark, Michael Larkin is in the near position, and it's a handoff to Steve Solman. Solman trying to take outside. Look how fast Wayne covers as the St. Xavier there. receivers are going to have to block. The Wayne Warriors with a 14-point lead are now bringing their defensive backs up. Watch number three, John Hollins, come up here to make the play. Solman's going to come out. Both of the receivers fail to hold on to their block. Number two there first. And then a whole bunch of Wayne Warriors, Carl Hayden and John Carl Hollins. Hayden. Carl Hayden penetrated immediately on that. He's a defensive back, and he was there faster than Steve Solman got to the corner. So obviously they're keying on Solman, as, as one as would, the, would expect. Uh, that's, that's, that's what you would do if you're going to play Xavier. Third down, about eight yards to go. They're going to have to block as Solman is in the slot, and we have a penalty marker on the play. Came from the defensive position. Wow, that must have been a very fast whistle as delay a game whistled against the Bombers. It'll now be third and 13. Important to get some yardage here as St. Xavier has been losing the field position game all night long, and they will kick off to begin the third quarter. Well, this is, again, this is the, one of those test times for uh, players because here we have to uh, we have to see if Marty Mooney is able to generate an offense now third and about 13 straight set Wayne brings two deep men drop. in Larkin Little deep drop pass. over here to Solman Solman's got one blocker can he now turn it upfield he does Steve Solman could go all the way Steve Solman to the 35 he's the 30 he's gone He'll never catch it. Steve Solman 76 yards there are no flags on the play and St. Xavier turns disaster into what may be the play that allows them to move forward in this game, Dave. Where we, where'd that play start, Dave? The 24-yard line was the original line of scrimmage, but Steve Solman picked that ball up on about the 19-yard line. So I believe they're going to credit him with a 78-yard score there, Dave. One block on the play made by number 78, Kevin Hodap, is what sprung Solman. Nolan on the kick. It was flat, but it went through. The Warriors 14, the Bombers 7. Let's take a look at this play that may be the most important play, as you see, number 44. Here comes Solman. Now watch it. We're going to try to bring this back as we picked it up when he really put the afterburners on. But Kevin Hodap makes a great block out here. 
When you live by the blitz, you can get hurt by the blitz. Mooney, look at Solman, going to take the block. Mooney now just trying to get rid of the ball, lofts it out to Solman. He catches it first, and the first block's going to be made by number 77, Chris Vessel. That's important there as he clears the man out. And now watch the juke by Steve Solman on the sideline as he just turns it on with the high step there. And now it's just a sprint to the sidelines. It's a question Solman. of speed right now. That's that's the speed. That's Solomon speed. Uh, and uh, that's football speed. That's not just raw speed. That's football speed. With the football, sprinting football is much more difficult than sprinting, obviously. Solomon's got that knack to run with great speed. There's the receivers, coaches, and he is really telling the boys good job as the Bombers are back in the game at 14 to 7. If the defense can hold, Dave, after that penalty, Penalty. Wayne went 60. It was well. He went 50 yards 50 after yards. the penalty. After the but penalty. it was about a 65-yard drive. Yep. And now this That's kick right. by Mike Chalk is going to drop it about the one-yard line. They don't want to let shirts. him get outside. There's number you know, 38. Psychologically, that it's that play. It's one play that'll get you charged up and going. Great stop there made on the play by number 37, Blake Jones. As it looked like number three, John Hollins, was going to go here. Watch Hollins come across, and then, as you said, lots of blue shirts. And then watch number 37 and number 38. And the blue shirts aren't reaching. They're running through people. Correction, that was 36. That was Brian Heisman who made the big stop. Now, if the defense can hold, it could be the type of possession that the Bombers want. Try to pick it up and not have to go so far. Tucker is going to gain about one yard. St. Xavier trying to get back in here as it's 14 to 7, the Wayne Warriors, and a nice stop there made by Jeremy Smith. Well, Dave, you talked about sophomore quarterback Marty Mooney. How was he going to be able to inspire him? And he went to senior Steve Solman, and there's inspiration right there. Well, and then, and then uh, you have Heisman down on the kickoff immediately after that, you know, and, and that, again, that's a good sign. That's a sign that there are people that are stepping up. Jones has got a man open over the middle, and he connects this time and able to cradle that, well, that ball in is number ball 19, looked, Wiley Pugh. I sure. thought it bounced out, too, and the back judge is going to say incomplete. They saw what we saw. Or is there a flag on the far sidelines? Let's watch this come up here, Dave. We're going to see this one again. The ball is being brought back, but let's watch the replay here. It's a nice throw there by Derek Jones, but as Pew goes down, it looks like he cradles just a little bit much. No, right. I think he, I think he had control of it. But there, there was a flag down here because he had a half the distance. There he did. Oh, he, he did. Yes, it he right did. at the end. Yes, he did. Right at the end, he dropped it. But he could have ruled that possession. Uh, that, that's a tough call. A holding call will take the ball back to the three-yard line, and so maybe this is what the Bombers needed—just a little bit of a break. The Warriors, with that block punt, created their own break. But this is danger on the near side line as Tyrone Hogan and Bobby Long come out split deep. Jones, Jones going to go deep. into the end zone. Oh. Rosing tried to get there, couldn't. Jones is going to scamper, and he goes out of bounds at about the seven, maybe the eight-yard line, and that will bring up third and about 14, Dave. It's great, great defensive coverage here. Excellent DB coverage. They have everybody locked up. Jones does not have anywhere to go. Dave, you've coached a lot of different sports, and you've been a commentator here with Waycross, and you pointed out this whole momentum shift about how important it was. St. Xavier scored the touchdown. Heisman makes the stop. If they can hold here, they may be able to tie this game up before halftime. The mind is a remarkable thing, Dave, and athletics is in every other walk of life. The mind allows you to do things you just don't know you can do. It. Jones and is going to drop back. Good pickup of the blitz. Jones, Jones has got Jones some room scramble. to go. Jones and Chris Stahl comes back along with Eric Scheidt, and Jones cannot get back to the line of scrimmage, and the Warriors will punt from their end zone. You got to feel the Bombers are going to not come after this one and maybe try to set up the return and well, score. I, we we got to hope that they at least, if, if we do go for it, that they're going to go for it and, and not get another roughing Look ball, at that which pocket open up before. there. Yeah. They really blocked well to the outside and left Jones nice passing lanes right down the middle. Good Eric, defensive reaction, though, by the Xavier ball team. Eric Scheidt and Chris Stahl. This is number 14, Bobby Long. Long, it's going to get that one off. Yeah. Michael Larkin, Larkin at about the 48 the yard line. There's a lot of white shirts there. Larkin gets Larkin around two, cuts back cuts right. Back up. <laughs> he dances, doesn't he? 
Wasn't that there were more. The, the problem is there were too many white shirts down there. <laughs> How about if I say the jitterbug? I'll date myself. <laughs> what? Watch his left, right, back, right. Oh. Because well, I don't like it going that way. This we'll go is back, and there is a flag, and the ball is going to be marked moved 15 back. yards back. The Bombers were at the 42-yard line. Now they're going to be back in their own territory as a 15-yard clipping penalty going to be marked off against St. Xavier. And we've got three minutes and 45 seconds left in the uh, first half here, Dave, with the Wayne Warriors leading the Xavier Bombers 14 to 7. This is Waycross Community Media's coverage of the St. Xavier Huber Heights Wayne playoff game coming to you from Welcome Stadium in Dayton. This is the second round game of the Ohio Division I playoffs. I don't know if you had a chance to see Welcome Stadium's new scoreboard out there, but that's a million dollar scoreboard they put up out here this year. Important here for the Bombers to cut this lead a little bit, maybe even just get a field goal because Wayne gets the ball to begin the third quarter. Yep. And the this is a very important possession. Long handoff, long wait for Steve Solman, and he's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He have gotten back to the line of scrimmage with no more than that. Will Allen, number four, came in there. It, it really looked like they wanted that one just to develop. Sometimes they drop a shovel pass off of there, but look how long he's just going to Well, he starts so there, deep back, back there. His, his job is to find the opening. The linemen block, and, and he reads the blocks and breaks off them. And uh, at that time, Wayne... Wayne ball players were in underneath, and Z uh, Xavier's blockers are not not clearing paths. Three man blitz. Mooney gonna have to get rid of it quick. He's got Arling over the middle, and Arling makes a good chance to move upfield. And Eric Arling. Eric Arling shows carries his side. seven men as he carries that six foot four inch frame and takes it down to the 40 yard line. So Dave 15, Bean has a pickup of 15. 15 yard gain, and, and and a lot of that's Eric Arling overpowering DBs. So this is where they originally started. Nice job started. by Marty Mooney, by the way. Under pressure, he gets that ball off, releases the ball extremely well, and Arling now is going to take charge of things. It looks like uh, there's a little bit of a fire being lighted under the Xavier butts. Oh, I guess I'm not allowed to say that, but that's what happened. <laughs> You talked about how low Wayne goes, and they are not afraid to throw themselves right at the ankles of these St. Yes. Xavier players. And, and that's what's making it so difficult for the Bombers to break big plays. Wayne just going high and low as number eight, Ben McLaughlin, ties up Steve Solman after a two-yard carry. Again, uh, Solman has been had great success finding his openings and, and making breaks through. And, and Xavier has got a good balance attack, and they've got to use that balance, as they did with Arling just a moment to early uh, moments ago to loosen the the, the uh, Wayne defense up. They try to balance it out and, and, and keep them off tangle. Mooney going to fake the hand off to Solman. Now he's going to have to run for his life as he's under big pressure and a great throw just to avoid a huge sack as he threw it at Tim Harrington, who was covered on the play by Adam Bodenmiller. Third and eight for the Bombers. It's one of those things where you don't want to give up that, that, that big loss in there, and yet you got to be careful about how you dump it, too. The uh, speed of these defenders are really giving St. Xavier's going to They've had time to throw the ball in previous games, but the speed here is really making Marty Mooney not have that, that, that opportunity to just sit back there and read the defense. It's kind of like sports cars around trucks right now. <laughs> third and eight. The last time the Bombers had a third and long situation, they went 76 yards for a touchdown. They'd like just eight for a first down. Mooney going to fire out here to Larkin, and what a great catch by Michael Larkin, number seven as John Hollins did everything a defensive back can do. I remember I remember Larkin's catch here on this field last year against Upper Arlington where he sold his body out. He does it again on this. Watch, watch the catch that he makes here. Goes up, great vertical, and, and he, he ended up number two there. Uh, uh, Carl Hayden was, was really well covered in this situation, but that was a great throw and catch. Nice toss to the outside. And it stops the clock at 153. That's important for St. X. Jeff Buning going to get into the act here as he takes about a six-yard <laughs> carry. And Marty Mooney, after that interception, Dave, has really settled down. And did you notice the zing he put on that ball? Again, for a sophomore, it's amazing. You know, you've been picked off once. You, you, you've got to be thinking about it when you come back up here. But obviously, Marty's got the, the, the 
mindset that allows him to step right up and continue to throw the ball extremely well. Bobby Klotz not afraid to, to make a call that if it's picked off, they're going all the way on it. Mooney looking deep. Nice fake by Larkin. Mooney now going to have to run. He's going to try to dump it off over oh. the middle, and it is. Is it intercepted or not? They're waiting for an official signal. Oh, yes. They and can, the referees rule an interception. Rule an interception. Kept his feet inbounds. I, maybe we can see that on the replay. So the, we'll try to pick that up as it was batted up into the air as Mooney. Yeah, it was tipped, and, and uh, I think it's the same guy tips it as we intercepts Right, it, it may have been Bowden Miller here. Watch Mooney get out a great job to get out of trouble there. He's looking, looking. He's got one man open. He's throwing off balance, and look at number six. Number six. He's definitely in bounds. It was just whether Billy he held Hackett. on to the ball, and it looked like he did. Billy, Billy Hackett, Hackett made the big play on the blitz before. Yeah. So the Warriors now with 140 may be able to run this clock out. They definitely don't want to fumble, but it looks like they're going for well, more they're points. they're taking the deep snap. Jones going to get the deep handoff to Tucker, let Tucker make up some yards. That's Chris Stahl and Eric Scheidt. Watch this, this now. Watch Hackett nice just stay with this, Dave. Keep his feet down. Look at him keep his feet in bounds. His knee, is, his knee is in, both knees are in. And he hangs nice on job. when he hits the great, ground. What a great catch. Great interception. Jones is going to throw this time. A little bit surprising here, but he's just going to dump it off there to John Hollins. Hollins has got two blockers out there with him. Cut back by Hollins, and er, uh, Brian Heisman hits the tackling. Yard line. By Brian Heisman. That's a pickup all the way down to the bomber, 44. Watch this catch and then carry by Hollins. This is exactly what you want. Pick up a few yards. This Hollins doesn't go out of bounds and just Dave rambles for about 44 yards. Well, this is a, this is the mark of a team that wants to make things happen. The, the, the conservative football says, you know, run the clock out, go in with a the lead. They're going to go. They want to. They want to go up. Going up top. Great they coverage. Want to be, they want to go out of here with a two touchdown lead and they're throwing. They're throwing the, the uh, kitchen sink catch at this at this point. Watch Joe Stevens on the far sidelines here with Bobby Long. The Warriors definitely think they can throw on this defense, and they're really spreading it out, keeping St. Xavier covering a multitude of players. Stevens with good coverage there as Long was forced to the sideline. That was that was a nice spiral on the ball there by Derek Jones. Yeah, Jones has got a nice arm. He, uh, he tossed that ball with uh, great ease at that point. That was a very nice throw, and he's accurate with his ball. He's been a little bit high, but high safely. There comes Tucker. Tucker on the carry. Tucker breaks a few tackles and then brings it down to about the 40-yard line where it'll be third and about five. Let's see if let's see if St. X calls a timeout here. The Warriors are going to call a timeout with third and offensive, five. Offensive line is into the blue shirts and, and into their bodies again. It's another one of those situations where the the offense is getting into the defense and they're and they're con controlling the blocks. They're maintaining blocks out there. St. Xavier crowd was really up. Momentum was going with the Bombers way since that Billy Hackett interception. It looks like the Bombers are back on their heels just a little bit and their fans feel that. A big play by number six Billy Hackett as he intercepted a Marty Mooney pass. Mooney did a great job to get out of coverage. Uh, that was coming from his far side. And uh, unfortunately, a great play by Billy Hackett stopped the St. Xavier offensive momentum. There's 36 seconds left to go. It's third and five. And the Wayne Warriors are on the St. Xavier 40-yard line as the defense comes back. They've, they've, they've driven this ball from their own, what, 24-yard line, 23-yard line? Right. And if nothing else, they've made a statement that we're not going away. It's, yeah. If, if, well, they did if this. If this ends like this, St. Xavier's got to go back in saying this team really wants to do something. Well, Fairfield, Fairfield learned this last week because uh, the same thing happened to Fairfield. Uh, Fairfield actually should have been ahead, but a, Jones a, a penalty Jones. kept Wayne in the ball game. Jones. And uh, so it's a... Uh, they're, uh, they're for real. Now it's fourth and five, and so St. Xavier's not going to have to call a timeout. So if they can hold here, if they can hold here, Dave, they may have a chance at, you know, seeing if they can throw the big play. Yeah, well, the, the uh, 
Now the Warriors are going to take a timeout, and they'll yeah. have one remaining on fourth and five. I, I think Jay Minton senses, senses that if he can push something in here, it, it just may be the psychological breakthrough oh. that the Warriors could really put the hammer down with. Yeah, but again, you you know, you've said before, Dave, that uh, we've seen again and again Xavier uh, does not break. It, it's been behind, and but it doesn't break. But we have a uh, we have 32 seconds. This is uh, the second quarter of the St. Xavier Wayne football game playoff game coming to you from Welcome Stadium. The volunteers of Waycross Community Media are bringing the action to you. Wayne at this point leads 14 to seven, and uh, as time as play resumes, Wayne has the ball on the Xavier 40 yard line. Fourth down and about six. And five. Jones Dave is going back into shotgun formation as Wayne has four men out. It looks like the Bombers are going to go into a prevent. They're trying to bring people. Mike Ferguson finally gets in there, but the pass is complete and he breaks two tackles trying to come back. And he's all the way down to the 17 yard line, and the Wayne Warriors have exactly what they want. As Mike Ferguson able to hit Jones, but not until he gets it off. Yard, that's about a 25 yard play. Watch Ferguson come here. Game. Jones is going to run away from him. Ferguson's going to come all the way across. There's the pass, and a great catch and carry here by number seven, Tyrone Hogan. This Wayne Warrior team reminds me a lot of Princeton. And, oh, really? uh, I didn't, know, I, see, I didn't I, see Princeton Well, not play this, this year, but, this but year. the Mancuso teams oh, of having uh -huh. a few people who can really break the big uh -huh. play, put the ball in their uh -huh. hand, and, th and then go from there. I mean, they're putting the ball in the hands of Hogan and Hollins. Jones hands off to Tucker to keep the Bomber defense honest, but right now that speed that Rass Steve Rasso was worried about is playing big. Well, the, the passes are good, but the runs after the passes, what's happening after the pass completion is, is really impressive. They're probably going to have to throw here. They have one Up timeout the, left. That could be Paul Coons on the interception, and he does pick it off. Oh, he dropped it there. Oh, an incomplete, but he broke it up anyway. A good breakup by Nine Paul seconds. Coons. Let's see what happens here on the replay as Coons, it looked like he picked this ball off, but we're so far away. He goes up with Bobby Long here. Good coverage. Cameraman right there. Coons got his hands on the ball, up, but up there right it fell there out as, it, as he pulled away from it. Long made a good play there. Yes, he, he saw did. that Coons had yep. it, and that it's just good. little little things like that, little battles all over the field that win the big war. Yep. Well, the uh, no, it's an interesting thing, Dave, with the restructuring of the uh, football playoffs this year. If it hadn't been for that restructuring, Wayne wouldn't be here. Wayne was uh, they were. Seventh, I believe, right. in, the, in the district, or were they fifth maybe or sixth. sixth? I think there were six. Yeah, they were. They, they yeah. would have made it. They would have made it. But well, it, the, it the, been the top close. four were Saint X, Elder, Fairfield, Fairfield, and, and Centerville. Centerville. Yeah. So they would not have made it in right. with only four teams right. going. But I'll tell you what, it's real exciting for our fans to see, and I think that's what the Ohio High School Athletic Association wanted across the state. Uh, this uh, has uh, been uh, yeah, this is has been tremendous. Be. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and you look at what happened in Cincinnati. You had traditional powers like Elder and Moeller and St. Xavier who made it in. Centerville, who's been to the playoffs before. They're right. playing down at, at Barnett Stadium tonight. Right. Uh, this Wayne team, which certainly they have the they, they have the guns, and St. Xavier is going to have to play like they played uh, in the, against Moeller and against Ignatius to come out of here because this Wayne Warrior team says we're putting it all on the line. Shotgun formation. Third down. Ten yards to go from about the 18. One man open back there, and he did stay in bounds for the touchdown. That's a 17-yard touchdown, and, and the Wayne was, Warriors go up 20-7. He, he, was, he was open, too. I mean, it was a – Tyrone Hogan was really open on this play. Man. Hogan got behind the defenders, and Derek Jones threw it right in there, and now – this is uh, exactly what Wayne wanted, a, a two-score lead, and that's why they threw the ball coming out of here. I'm sure they'll just put the, the kickoff down low so St. X can't return it. And the Wayne Warriors, a 20-7 lead, and the St. Xavier Bomber football team and fans right now are in shock. McLean's kick. 
Goes up right through the Pretty uprights. Good. Four seconds Ooh. remaining, Dave Bean. The Wayne Warriors 21 and the St. Xavier Bombers 7. Well, one of the things that would certainly help things out a lot right now, Dave, is to get a great run back uh, on this kickoff. And uh, certainly Larkin is capable of doing it. But as you say, this is probably going to be some kind of a squib kick because certainly uh, Wayne doesn't want to give, give the uh, Bombers the opportunity to really do something here. Dave, as you said, that beautiful new scoreboard here at Welcome Stadium showing the fireworks. And a lot of people thought St. Xavier would be having the fireworks, but yep. right now the Bombers realize that they have got to step up and play some football, and well, I'm sure the coaches are going to address that at the halftime break. Well, certainly the one great uh, uh, screen pass to Solman that we thought was going to turn momentum shows something about the Wayne team also. Oh, they did they didn't back off. They could have very easily and, and again traditional thinking would say, you know, run the clock out, get let's go into the uh, with a lead at halftime. But they decide they're gonna they're gonna really go in with a lead at halftime if they possibly can. It's a very, very determined football team. Billy Hackett number six showed that determination as he picked off the pass that really set this last score by Wayne in motion. It's going to be a short kick. St. X is going to have to take off. Harrington's going to take it. And he's just going to take a fair catch. So St. X will have a chance for one play. Yeah. See if they try to put the trips out here. The last thing Coach Steve Rasso wants is a turnover at this point as the Wayne Warriors are up by 14 points. On the other hand, if you could break one long one, I got a feeling Wayne's going to have triple deep safeties on this play. Uh, yeah, at least triples. Well, Larkin is There's spread out deep. deep. It doesn't look like St. X is going to do too much here, but you never know. It could be that halfback option pass where he pitches to Solman. Uh, Solman's just going to try to hold on to the ball, come up the middle. Uh, find, a, find a path and get out of bounds. Out of bounds. And, and that will be the final out. play as Steve as Solman picked up enough for the first down but this first half belongs to the Wayne Warriors as they are thrashing the St. Xavier Bombers 21 to 7 not just on the board but in the trenches and in the stands you know an interesting thing Dave well, we were here a long time before the game started and uh, Xavier got here fairly close to game time and uh, they kind of act like they really haven't gotten here yet in some ways but nevertheless at the half it's the Wayne Warriors 21, the St. Xavier Bombers 7. This is Dave Bean. My sidekick, Dave Eby, and I, we're going to step out here for a little bit. We'll be back for the second half shortly. I remember this kid, Terrence. He was the most incredible player I've ever seen. I'd go into work and come out, and Terrence would still be there, practicing his foul shots. I stopped and just watched him. He made 76 baskets in a row. Terrence thought he'd only smoke a crack once. That's too bad. I would have cheered for him in the NBA. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, tonight the band will perform America the Beautiful and Jump, Jive, and Whale.
ladies and gentlemen, the 1999 St. Xavier Bomber Marching Band. Welcome Stadium as there's four minutes remaining here in halftime as both bands have performed. The Wayne Warrior Band going first and then the St. Xavier Bombers coming out. Dave Bean, an interesting first half here at the Ohio High School Athletic Association game here at Welcome Stadium as the Warriors have done what a lot of people thought was impossible and that is take a commanding lead here against the Bombers. Yeah, Dave, it's uh, it, the, the, the the Xavier stands are quiet. Uh, it's uh, not not to be unexpected though because their their favored bombers are uh, falling behind here. And uh, we're uh, we're going to take a look at some of the highlights from the first half here, Dave, and, and uh, let folks see just what happened here that puts the bombers behind by 21 to 7 here. Right. Statistically, Dave, the game was close. Let's watch Marty Mooney here as he drops back. Picked off early on in the game there by number 51 and a Bowden Miller. And then you're going to see the block this punt here. This is the here. block punt. This is what turns everything upside down right here. Mervis really takes a long time getting it off. Carl Hayden on the block. And then number four, Will Allen takes it in. And the uh, point after was... Uh, uh, by McLean is uh, going to be a, a success. They're going to put it up to the Wayne fans are in heaven at this point. They came hoping to see a win, but this is not this here is a comes punt the fake up. punt run by number 14. That was Bobby Long and Long takes it way down. Dave, one of the things that led to that was a was a problem by St. X. Let's watch the Wayne touchdown coming up here as yeah. Ernest Tucker, watch number five, hit this hole and just keep going. This is their leading rusher and uh, he's he's tough. He runs hard. Good blocking out of the uh, the front front seven of the of the Wayne Warriors. And it's 14 to zero at this point and Wayne is basically in control of the game. A penalty killed St. X. It's third and 13 and the Bombers are really deep in their own territory on about the 22 yard line. Steve Solman gets a great block by Chris Fessel right there and then and Solman's Larkin just gonna turn it on. Too. And a good job there by Brad Growey. And Solman's just going to take it all the way now. And at, at this point, it looks like St. X is coming back. Right. It's 14-7. Right. And Xavier's moving the ball now. Now watch number six, Billy Hackett. The Bombers have brought it down to the Wayne about 25-yard line. Their defense did a great job. Mooney's going to be flushed out of the pocket here. Going to roll out to, to, the, to the right a little bit. And he just can't get enough He's on it. He's chased out of the pocket. Watch, this one's going to float. Hackett's going to knock it in the air and just stay with it. Knees. It's, it gets his knees in and, and hangs on. They've got 226 left. This is with seven seconds left in the first half. And Wide open. Right into the deep corner of the of the end zone for the 21st, the 21st, well, 20th, and then eventually the 21st point was put up and good. But as you started to say, Dave, this is statistically is a very close game. Uh, Wayne has 155 yards, Xavier 151. One of the things that's interesting is that uh, Xavier has more passing yardage than does Wayne. But it, most of that comes on a single play. That 76-yard touchdown screen pass. Which is half of Xavier's yardage. Now, Dave, we were looking. We said, you know, that a war is won by winning many little battles and taking turning points to their conclusions. Wayne has definitely done that. The the mistake by the Bombers on the 15-yard penalty that gives them a first, first down, down in on, on roughing territory. the kicker, yep. and then Wayne takes it in to score. St. X is ready to tie this game up at 14-14, and what does Wayne do? They intercept the ball, and then instead of 
running it out like many people thought they would. They take it all the way down and score, and they have a commanding lead, and they get the ball here in the third quarter. So it's hugely important for the St. Xavier Bomber defense to make a stop early and deep and then to take over this field possession game because I think if the Bombers can't get back and tie it up, Dave, in the third quarter, Wayne may just hold on to run this clock out. Xavier only has 39 yards rushing in the first half. That's pretty amazing. Let's talk about what you saw there in defensive formation. Six linebackers being yeah. substituted in on plays within four yards of the ball. Xavier was, Xavier, uh, Wayne was uh, sending in a lot of very small, well, they're not real small, 215-pound linebackers. At one point in time, they had six of them within uh, four yards of the ball. Four of them were down. Two of them were in the inside linebacking position, and they were all blitzing. And they were so quick that Xavier was trying to trap but the blitzes were running in the back pockets of the trapping guards and tackles and, and, and slicing through and getting into uh, Mooney and Solomon and, and uh, the, the Xavier backfield with great consistency. So the quickness of Wayne is causing Xavier uh, more than headaches. It's driving them nuts out here, and they, they trail. Uh, another big item. Uh, Xavier's been penalized seven times in the first half for 35 yards. 15 of those, as you pointed out, Dave, was for roughing the kicker. When Xavier would have gotten the ball back, the net result of the 15 yards put the ball on Xavier's side of the field. Wayne went ahead and drove down the field and scored its 14th point. And that's when, the, it really, Xavier was uh, in a state of shock until the, 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 the long uh, touchdown run back. So a block punt, a critical penalty, and two interceptions. Uh, that's a... That, that's hard hold to dig out of. Exactly. We saw that last week when the Elder Panthers hung on to beat the Oak Hills Highlanders, and they, Elder made a lot of mistakes, and that's what St. Xavier has been able to avoid uh, heading into here. And so let's see what happens in the second half because the Bombers are going to have to open up everything that they have in order to get back into this game. We talked about momentum, and I really believe that if St. X can get the, the, the score tied at 21, they will have a great chance of going on to win because the momentum would definitely shift in their favor. The longer Wayne stays in this game, the longer they're going to be able to take those chances up front with those two great defensive backs who really cover a lot of mistakes, and that's really pre uh, giving a headache to St. X. Well, I told you at the uh, top of the show, Dave, that I talked to some people from here in the Dayton area there they were very vocal in their uh, support of uh, coach Jay Minton they're saying that he may very well be the very best coach in the state of Ohio he's taken a team that they've had a 75 percent winning record over the last several years but they've never been in the playoffs and he seems to have taken them a step further he's taken them into this point of where they really believe in themselves and that they can knock people off and they're showing it tonight a great discipline victory last week against Fairfield, and they're showing that discipline tonight as they are not beating themselves. Wayne took advantage of a mistake that Fairfield made in that game last week also. This is a this is a team that exploits your mistakes. Fairfield roughed uh, the kicker on a field goal attempt and ended up with Wayne getting the ball back getting a first down and going on and scoring the touchdown that ended up being the 18-14 victory margin for the for the Warriors. So this is an exploitive team and that's a that's a that's a very uh, that's a very strong case. Steve Rasso has been around for years and years and years. What is it? 22 years at Xavier now? He's been at St. X for a long time and you saw him really trying to inspire the troops there. But he didn't have that panic look on his face. No. He was really doing a no. good job. He's, He's been telling here them, This is what we need to do. And it's going to be little things that get the yep. Bombers back into this yep. game. It's also um, going to take some leadership on the part of uh, some of these uh, uh, some of these uh, seniors. And, 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 and the, the, one of the things that really has to happen is that Marty Mooney has got to have come back on this field in the second half with confidence. He's been picked off twice. One by a spectacular play and one when, eh, well, that could have happened but this is where courage becomes the name of the game and Mooney's going to need a little help from that offensive line that has played so well in these past few weeks he's going to need them to hold the blocks a little bit it's the goal of Mike Chalk to put this ball into the end zone 
because they do not want a long return here by the Warriors. And Wayne, I believe, Dave, that they were expecting that long kick. And so what they did was kind of cover up in case he squibbed it. Yeah. Notice that this time St. Xavier took the win behind their back. So Steve Rasso, I think, is putting a premium on tying this game up. And then he'll take his chances in the fourth quarter. Well, the wind hasn't really picked up any, Dave. It's still blowing out of the south there. This is a this is a great kick. Uh, the, the ball takes off and it gets really up in the air and hangs. And that wind, though it isn't a big wind, it's enough to really make that ball carry out of, into the end of the end zone. Great kickoff. Derek Jones, the quarterback, hands off on a nice sweep here to number seven. That's Tyrone Hogan. And Hogan gets a nice long run for the Warriors. That may be enough for the first down out to the 31-yard line. And it is 11-yard pickup, first and 10 Warriors. Hogan is the second leading rusher for the Warriors. And uh, he hasn't gained a lot of yards. Uh, but, but when you combine his yardage, uh, again, this is a balanced team. When you combine his uh, yardage with uh, uh, Tuckers, uh, they're gaining huge chunks of yardage each week. Pat Kelly had to come up and make the stop. Hogan is lined up in that flanker position. He's going to come around. They like to pitch it out to him here. And I believe we're going to have uh, perhaps a procedure call or an illegal formation as that came up very quickly there on the line. It is going to be a false start. So it'll be first and 15 for the Warriors from the 26-yard line. Dave, well, you talked about what Jay Minton did. He's coming out here saying, if we can score, fellas, we may really put the pressure on him. And it's up to the St. Xavier defense to hold right now so the Bomber offense can get on that field and try to get this game back to where they can feel a little bit more confidence and a little bit more comfortable. Dave, I misspoke there a minute ago. Jones on the carry. Jones gets away. Jones gets Dumps it, it off. off. That was a that was an escape route if I ever saw one. John Holland's on the catch and a nice stop there. I misspoke a moment ago. I, I said Xavier had uh, picked up seven penalties. They only had three penalties in the first half, but still it was 35, 35 yards. 35 yards. Two 15-yarders in that five-yarder. Well, we just saw what happens with the penalty here. Wayne, who had been pretty much in a, in a controlling situation, comes out, picks up a, a, a procedure charge a foul, and, and that set them back now. And, and, and so this can turn around and, and bite Wayne it's, as well as bite Xavier. It's second and 14, and Jones does not throw too many interceptions. Only 14 on the year. Jones got a ton of room to run. Hangs on to the ball, fires to the near sidelines, and it's incomplete as Joe Stevens provides the coverage. Wisely dumped that one into the bench. It'll be third and 14 and a big, big play. For I don't know how he defense. feels the pressure. He's got eyes in the back of his head here, it seems. Because all at once he comes over, he sets up. And now he knows Now he knows the pressure's there. And, and he gets rid of the ball, and the, the, the pass is out of bounds. The St. Xavier faithful trying to rise and help their team out here as the Bombers are a 14-point deficit right now, and it's third and 14. Wayne trying to get some momentum. Great blocking job up front. And, there and then it finally the breaks first down. Time Mike that Jones has been hit. Mike Ferguson. We talked about Mike having to have a big game, and Dave, that takes it back to the 23. It'll be what? fourth and 18. What a job by Ferguson. Dave, you were saying Mike Ferguson had a, a game of his, perhaps his life last week against Moeller, and it's about time that he began to show some of that same fire here. There he is, right in there, right on Jones. Look at how Jones pulled that ball in. And now St. X has an excellent opportunity here. Michael Larkin and Steve Solman are deep. This could be exactly what they need if they can just field it and don't let it bounce back. Larkin, flat, oh, oh, a bad play by Michael Larkin as it got caught. I don't the, know. The wind was, he punted into the wind. That's going to go down to the St. Xavier 25-yard line. The ball looked like it jumped when it got to it. Dave Bean, that's a 54-yard punt as Michael Larkin misjudged that one. And St. X, who would have been on the 45, is now back on their 25, and they got a long way to go. Yeah, 75 yards down the field they've got to get. And, uh, and, and uh, there's a whole host of Wayne Warriors that are looking to give them a lot of trouble getting there. There's number eight, Marty Mooney. You saw him jogging onto the field, a very confident, a very in control sophomore who's now going to ask his offensive line to just give him time to hit his gifted receivers, Eric Arling and Michael Larkin. Steve Solman would like a little bit of time to run. 
There's a pass play out to Tim Harrington. Harrington's got Harrington's some room, and Harrington's going to take it up to about the 43-yard line. I think he's out beyond that, Dave. That's going to be Dave, about after the 40. Yeah, 43. You're right. It's 23-yard gain, Dave. That's a nice pass play. Watch Those Solman. kind we can use. He'll get rocked right here. They're they're keying on him, but yeah, he but, hangs in there. But look at that. He block. hangs in there and maintains the block on uh, James Brown, who's a 225-pound linebacker, and that's that's important. The you Bombers out of that huddle quickly. I don't know if they'll go to the no huddle tonight, Dave, but they definitely have to move. They can't panic, but look at how they're trying to loosen him up as Mooney tries to throw to Buning, and that one will fall incomplete. You see, uh, you see that uh, the, the Xavier is trying to loosen this defense up. And again, uh, Wayne has been blitzing, 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 putting the pressure in the middle. We saw it work when Solomon got broke loose on the screen. We saw we saw it work actually when uh, uh, on another pass play I can't think who it was Arsby. Uh, anyway, if he gets time, he's made some nice gets. Big hole for Steve Solman, and Solman picked that one up. So Steve Solman will take it for about seven yards to midfield, and it'll be an important third and three play. Let's see if the Xavier line is getting into their blocks better this time. There's one under. There's two under. There's there's a there's a block maintained. That's a little better. And look at that warrior defense though. Hammer down. Third and a lot an of important white three yards, almost four for a bomber first down. Here you have four Not down uh, linebackers. Dave, and they had three men up close. Mooney's gonna try to fire it out. And that's picked and off. He no. Yes, it is. It is by number three, John Hollins is Mooney. I, I believe tipped that one off a little bit with the high hold, and he stepped right in front of Michael Larkin, who tried to max him off but couldn't do it. Boy, he was he was really covered one on one there. That was a really great defensive effort. Wow. It'll be first and ten, Warriors, as that's the third interception tonight for the Bombers. And and we talked about how good these defensive backs were for Wayne and Hollins. Certainly showed it there. So Wayne with excellent field position at the St. Xavier 48 yard line. Doubles out here with the man in flanker position. Pitch out to Tucker. Tucker has nowhere to go. And Tucker is dropped for about a six yard loss. You know, people Jeremy talk about Smith and Keith Rosing in there. People talk about how uh, offenses score the points and stuff, but it's defenses that set the tone. And, and the defense of Xavier has to really get going here. Watch Jeremy Smith just come right through. Keith Rosing is there. Good job by Pat Ross. So all three linemen able to blitz through that time. And it'll be second and be about 14 yards to go. Four wideouts this Four. time. The Bombers are coming. And Jones trying Jones. to get through. What a job Sweet by Heather. Jeremy guy, Smith who gets back to get through, Jones. The guy slips through holes that, that, that rats get through. You know, those little bitty ones. If, if he can get his hand through, he can get through. Watch Jones here. He feels the pressure. Look at Pat Ross, number 66 Ross coming. Wants to, he wants to gobble him up right there. Look at Smith. Doesn't give up. Just comes back, makes the stop. And it'll be third and about 12. Big play here. The St. Xavier defense did it last yards. time. Four See wide outs. Four wide. The Bombers rushing three. Looks like a screen, screen pass up being the set up. Smith just can't get there as Hollins put on the afterburner, and he'll pick up the first down. Is that a play that Xavier runs? Exactly. They, they pull that back and just bring it back to the flanker and watch Hollins come through here, and he just exploded. Smith felt it was coming and tried to get back, but just couldn't get there. And look at the play on Eric Scheidt there as he was blocked off. That was, well that was a well-designed play. That was a well-designed play and, and executed at the right point in time in the game, too. Number 31, Pat Kelly is down for the Bombers. Pat Kelly is a senior defensive back for St. X, and he's down. And the Wayne Warriors pick it up when they need it as they now have first and 10 on the 36. Well, the, uh, the Bomber defense held, 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 and then you get that one broken situation, one big play. And again... Wayne it depends on these big plays again and again and again. And they but they got the, they've gained control of the ball again on Xavier's side of, the, of midfield. 
and that uh, that makes that makes a big difference. That gives them that short field. And they've taken that short field to their advantage as they are not afraid to put the ball up or to do some things that other teams have not been able to do against this St. X defense. There's seven minutes remaining here in the third quarter and the clock is definitely the friend of the Wayne Warriors as they're up by 14 points, 21 to seven. Derek Jones, number 13, is calling out the signals. Nice fake Jones, inside fake to Tucker. Inside. Man open over the middle is John Hollins. And as Hollins Michael Graham, number 10, made a big mistake. Mike Graham went down. And now the Wayne Warriors seemingly have an almost insurmountable lead on a 37-yard touchdown pass. John Hollins just completely fakes out number 10, Michael Graham, who came in for the injured Pat Kelly. As Dave J. Minton knew that substitution was made, went right at him, and Graham just completely faked out, and then Hollins carries it in for the score. Yep, that... Uh that's, a, that's again, that's an excellent play call because you're running right at, at a replacement. And that's well, one of the best things you can do. McLean's kick is up. And, and it's, it's good. good. Seven minutes and five seconds remaining. The Wayne Warriors 28 and the St. Xavier Bombers 7. The last time Michael Larkin had made a mistake on a punt or a kickoff, the next play, he ran the next punt and kickoff back for a touchdown. And that's what St. X needs right now. They really need some magic as the Wayne Warriors are playing a very sound game and their offensive plan is working to perfection tonight. Well, they, they've, been, uh, they've been willing to risk to succeed. They, they, you know, and that's the, that's the thing that is the mark of, of successful teams is that they haven't been afraid to risk everything to succeed. That's, uh, that's also the mark of good coaching. Uh, and again, I gotta, I gotta believe that that the newness that Wayne brings to this game is to their advantage. That while Xavier comes into the game as the favorite just by its record, these guys are the ones that don't have any. You know, it's the old, it's the proverbial. What have we got to lose, guys? Right. And last week, St. Xavier, everyone talked about what a tough first round game they yeah. had against Moeller. Yeah. And then there was no build up for this game. It's yeah. as if the elder Centerville game has taken over yeah. all the build up yeah. in this region. And so the Wayne Warriors silently just prepared themselves. And right now it looks like well, 18's going so to so silently, just kick it so short. silently that uh, you, you could we couldn't get response from them uh, at Waycross for uh, getting uh, background information. You know, they just, it was like, well, maybe we'll get around to showing up, you know, and, and that's, uh, sometimes that's called sandbagging. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this now, as they just drop it short and the St. Xavier forward secondary line doesn't even move and Larkin almost has to field it off of their shoulder pads. It's clear that He's Wayne in is front not of his gonna blockers. kick it deep. Exactly. He's completely, in, he has to be in front of his blockers. And since they did that the last two times, I thought we may see a little bit of a change. Now St. Xavier's going with a little bit of a change here as Tom Perazzo is the halfback and Steve Solman is in the slot. They like to bring Solman out down the middle and then send him long. There's Michael Larkin going deep. Larkin, 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 Larkin he should go all the way. Oh, he's he going to be run right down. Step. Michael Larkin <laughs> driven out of bounds oh at the three-yard line. That's Marty Mooney to Michael Larkin, 57 Carl yards Hayden. and a bomber first down. Carl Hayden can motor. I'm telling you what now. Mooney just drops this one in. What a great pass. This kid's been intercepted three times, but he hangs in there, just fires this one right on the button to Larkin. Great catch by Larkin, by the way. That that ball was dying um, like a dead whale, too. A little slip right there, and that's what I think allowed Hayden to run him down. You're yeah. talking about two speedsters yeah. right there. Look at Hayden. Knows the sidelines there. Now we've got uh, Harrington's first the up back. Solman is the deep position, so a big play for St. X will get them back within two scores if they can convert. Last time they were down deep in this territory, it ended up Balls in an interception. The three. Ten men packed, uh, eight men packed in tight for the Warriors. Solman, Solman gets the handoff, and man, Solman worked He's that out himself. Touchdown, Bombers. 
Steve Solman, Dave, went four yards by looking for all kinds of holes where none existed. Well, again, that's the way that play is designed. Put him back there, give him room, and let him pick his hole. Watch Eric Arling lay a great block out here. As Solman, it just looks like there's one, two, three bodies ready to meet him behind the line. Shucks one tackler and then just carries in for the score. An important extra point here for Evan Nolan. Six minutes and 38 seconds remaining. They needed a quick score and they got it. Now can they capitalize and keep moving? Nolan's kick Big, is good. Nolan converts. Big push there by the Warriors. The Bombers are going to have to get special team blocking down. So the Warriors 28, the Bombers 14. Who is going to grab momentum of this third quarter with 6.38 remaining? Mike Chalk will kick off for St. Xavier. Does he kick it deep, or is he going to try to punt it short and see if the Bombers can just cover the ball? Dave, don't be... That's about a 63-yard... I, 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 I went to check and see where we started. That, that fast play started from, Dave. And don't be... 70, 70 yards, 73 yards. Don't be surprised if the good Bombers play. go onside here. There's a lot of hands, men, out there for St. Xavier on that line. Well, it's when good you thing you're here, Dave Eby, it. because you recognize them all, and that's a, that's a great thing. Uh, that you've, you've seen these guys all yeah, year, and you know very well what they can do. He really booted it deep last time. There's still six minutes remaining. If they want to get into the field position game, he may just boot it deep. He's going deep. He's going deep. That one looks like it's going to carry to the one-yard line, and a great job to keep his feet in bounds. Oh, oh, oh. That was John Hollins. And Hollins will bring it out to the 27-yard line as St. X trying to pull the ball loose. Blake Jones looked like he pulled it out, but they're going to rule that he was down. Must have been blown dead. I'm going to see this here on the near side. Let's we can see this because Hollins, uh, Hollins is causing trouble for everybody. What a great job as he stayed out of the end zone, which is the important thing. And now Hollins is going to turn where. it up. Now look for the strip to come right there. Blake Jones trying to pull now it they out. Probably they probably called the play called dead. They probably called it dead as Jones yeah. clearly has the yeah, ball. Right. They must have called the play dead. It'll be first, first and ten. 10 for the Warriors. Last time they line. went 70 some yards on their own. So both teams showing why they're in the Division I playoffs. The Wayne Warriors There's a hand off here to their flanker, flanker number 14. That's been their best rushing play of the night. It's Bobby Long. Look at Hollins. Hollins catches that ball with his foot on the goal line. Oh my. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was in the that was in the the goal line is well let's see if it's on the line and I'm not sure. In or wrestling, it's actually, out of bounds. So I don't actually, <laughs> I think it's if the ball goes in and he yeah, kept the ball from going in. The ball in. was in. Yeah, the ball didn't cross the plane. Second and about eight. Hand off to Tucker. Nothing there. Not yet. Boy, but Tucker, Tucker's hard to bring down. Dave, have you noticed that the, I don't know if they're just holding the whistle to make sure that forward progress is stopped, but I would hate to see a penalty flag thrown later on because yeah. it just seems like that whistle's long yeah. and coming. It, we can't hear move it. it all the way back. One of our problems is we can't hear the whistle where we are, uh, and, and, and that that's part of it. But you got to worry about that that very thing, yes. But they, they seem to be waiting, giving everybody the opportunity to break loose because uh, Tucker has the remarkable capacity to do so. Jones has shown that capacity. Comes a it's going to be a five-yard penalty there as Eric Scheidt came up for the blitz and one of the Warrior linemen jumped, and that'll make it third and about 13. It's interesting. They've got the nickel package in. There's two penalties this half against the Warriors, uh, and they only had one in the first half. It's, uh, and they've both been procedure penalties or shift penalties, movement penalties. Momentum shift here if the Bombers can hold and if the offense could cash in. A lot of ifs. It's little battles all over this war field here at Welcome Stadium. Jones with a good drop. Good protection. Plenty of time, and he Throws can't get it out there to number seven, Tyrone Hogan. Fourth and 13 from the 25-yard line. Chris Stoll gave really nice coverage on this. Watch this, 1,001, two. 
three, four, five. Took a stole coverage. That's the reason that that ball had to be thrown out of bounds because Stoll had it had it nailed. I mean, he had it covered. Good to see. Well, that's but probably again, why Jones only throws four interceptions. That's he right. Says, He's only thrown four all year. Here. And Wayne's system has been: if you're going to beat us, you're going to go the length of the field to beat us. Larkin trying Larkin to take this on one. 40, He's back at about the 40-yard yard line. Yard line. line. Michael Larkin trying to cut it up, but the speed of the Warriors nails him back Good at coverage. about the 37-yard line. 37-yard line, first and 10 for the Bombers. Dave, you got to think that St. X has to get it down to one score before the end of this quarter. They can't go in down two in the fourth. Oh, I agree. I agree. Because I don't think that uh, I don't think Wayne has finished scoring in this game. Exactly. And if St. X can make it a one-score game, it just puts more pressure on that Wayne offense. Anthony Golden off uh, on the tackle on that kickoff or punt. And Solman deep. Mooney. Gonna Hands off to Larkin. Larkin looking deep. Michael Larkin is one for one on the season. He'll throw to Eric Arling. Oh, boy, Arling can't I'd hold to, on there. I tell you, I want to. I hope we have that on on replay because that look. This looks. This looks awfully close to interference, Dave Eby. Let's see what happens. Eric's so big. Watch this here. The hand fake to Solman. The handoff to Larkin. Larkin looks over the field. Has plenty of time. The Bombers are pulling it all out here. They're not leaving anything to be uh, surmised. In Very this game. patient. Pass comes down. No. That's nope. Just didn't catch. Just it. couldn't pull it in. Perhaps a little bit of a different spin from a left-hander. Yeah. <laughs> Second and ten. Saint Xavier. They're at their own 37-yard line. Steve Solman in the deep formation. Michael Larkin is spread out to the right along with Jeff Buning. Mooney going to drop. He's got Solman over the middle. He's got Larkin, Eric Arling. The pass was behind him, and now it'll be third and 10. That was uh, that's a play that normally Arling completes with no problem whatsoever, and, and he's got to be the he, – he's the he feels the worst of anybody on the field right now. Eric Arling. Two balls. Neither of which he, he's brought in. That, that's very sure handed. And we saw him rumble in the first half. They'll still come back to him. Oh, yeah. They really trust what he's doing. Now let's see if Wayne is going to blitz. They've got eight men in the box and they're bringing six. Good job by the Bombers. Mooney's now going to have to hustle. Solman is covered here. Mooney going to try to fire it up for Larkin. That was a bad decision. That was really a bad decision. He couldn't get his shoulders square. He was jumping and trying to throw the ball up, and there were three defenders coming in to cover. That was a very bad decision at that point. Three in and out for St. Xavier, not what they needed as the Wayne defense answers the St. Xavier. Mooney makes a Mooney makes a bad choice here. Watch the watch this the pressure coming from the right side. Notice the lack of big numbers on the on the field for the Dad Warriors. Mervis is going to punt the Warriors with 10 men. Actually, actually, that was a better decision. We couldn't see the sideline from here. That was a better decision than not because he threw the ball out of bounds, so it couldn't be intercepted. That's a high punt by Matt Mervis and a fair catch. Quick signal there by John Hollins as the Bombers surrounded him. So Mervis got it off. Xavier defense worked really well the last time, forced the forced. Uh, uh, Wayne into a punt and the offense didn't do anything with it. Now let's see if the defense can do it again. You can only go to the well so many times and the Bombers are down 14 points. We talked about maybe too little too late as the Warriors built a three score lead and now St. X is going to have to dig itself out. Wayne so far has not committed a turnover. It's 444. So the Bombers have not had a short field to work with. That's Tucker on the carry, and Tucker is dropped down. You can see why the Warriors, Dave, want to pass because the, the run just isn't there. It's moving the clock. They're doing everything they can to there. get blocking, and they're bringing people from every angle on the field to get blocking. But the but there's a great defensive stall play on the by Stall. Chris Stall Came making right a great down the job line. there. Tyrone Hogan, who's who's had some nice catches and some nice carries tonight, but Chris Stahl shut him down there, second and ten. Forcing them to pass, especially if they're incomplete, can only help Shotgun. the Bombers. Shotgun Jones is going to hand off here to Hogan. Hogan's got some room to go. St. X going to try to knock it down, and Nick Lyle made a huge tackle as Hogan had a lot of running room and he get past Lyle, and number 28 stepped up huge. 
clock is running though we're down under four minutes here in the third quarter and the Bombers still trail this is this inside handoff watch Lyle come up here as he gets away from Scheidt and then Nick Lyle just wraps holds buries third and about seven the defense so far doing the job in the second half against this explosive Wayne Warrior offense except for the one series that resulted in the second half touchdown here comes a blitz another movement Bobby Long the flanker has jumped twice he made the great run that set up their third touchdown. I think that was number 77, the uh, right tackle at uh, 73, maybe it is. As I saw uh, uh, Dan Bout uh, point right away. It's going to be third and about 12, Dave. Antoine Walker, a tight end. Checking into the game here for the Warriors. Antoine's been quiet tonight. Walker has uh, an average of 16 yards a catch. Exactly. In their stats. And he's a, he's, a, he's one of these guys that comes in. When he comes in, you better watch him. Let's see who's going to pick him up. He's going across the middle, and I think we're going to get a delay of game penalty here because that came from all the way back. It is a delay of game. So it's going to be third and 17. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That, that I, I saw that. In this. And, and it looked like Walker was doing a slant over the middle yep. there. A big rush here is what the Bombers need. A turnover would be tremendous so they don't have to go the length of the field. Yep. 17 hand off yard underneath, average. throws the linebackers. Jones with a lot of time. Oh, Smith! Oh, Smith! With a great, the sack. great sack. Jeremy Smith. That was needed. Four. Because Jones had Jones has lots of room. Boy, what the Bombers need now is a really bad snap. <laughs> You're looking for everything here, aren't you, Dave? Well, so far, <laughs> Wayne hasn't fumbled or thrown an interception, and they, St. X could really use a big one here. Watch Smith just Smith, come back. Great job. He There's nobody up. ahead of Jones. Jones would have picked up a first down if Smith had made that, that, that saving tackle. He's 220 pounds moving like that. That should be illegal. Look at how low they're trying to kick it so that the Bombers can't make a return, get out of the way as Ferguson was going back. And St. Xavier will have the ball out. on their 43-yard line. This is not bad position for them to move out of with one minute and 57 seconds remaining. It's critically important for the Bombers to score, and let's see what Coach Offensive Coordinator Bobby Klotz comes up with here as last time it was three and out. Well, the, the, the Bombers... Uh Randy. Aren't out of this ball game. We're down to a minute 57. There's time to, like you said before, Dave, putting it in in this quarter would make a huge difference to bring it down to a single touchdown deficit going into the fourth. Randy Newsom is out deep. Buning is in the slot, and Larkin's deep on the other sideline. Hand off to Solman, and he just powers ahead for about four yards, and it'll be second and six. They're trying to give Marty Mooney some time to throw here. So running the ball may loosen that up just enough. There's some, again, there's there's white shirts slipping blocks in there that are causing, that's causing real serious trouble. And Carl Hayden again makes the stop. Arling, Buning, Solman out wide. Larkin out to the other side. It's going to be a pass out here to Steve Solman. They're trying to get a lot of blocking out there, and Carl Hayden single-handedly breaks up three blockers, so it'll only be a two-yard pickup. It'll be third and about five. That time, uh, Wayne tossed in defensive linemen into the into the mix that time, and uh, they've, they've got several pretty good-sized defensive linemen, but they're, they're all in the 240-pound range, and there's some really tremendous one-on-one -on -one battles going on in the field right now, Dave Eby. Brian Acne made that stop out there, helping out. We've called his name all night, and he's only a junior, so you got to like having him come back. Mooney trying to fire his hit as he let it go, and that pass is going to be ruled incomplete as Browie tried to go down and get it, couldn't do it. It'll be fourth, fourth and five, and Dave, i got to think the Bombers are going to go for it here. They're down 14 points. 
but it looks like Coach Steve Rasso says, nope, we're going to punt the ball and trust our defense. Ryan McLaughlin in there for the Warriors. Matt Mervis to punt. He's really going to have to get it off quick. A nice high punt that every, gets covered well and fumbled. Would be very nice at this point. The maybe. Warriors are coming. They have watch the snap here maybe to Steve Solman as he's in the position. Yeah, St. Xavier. snap. Solman trying to power ahead, but he'll only get to the 45-yard line. This is so Steve Solman takes the first down. Wow. Wish we had, we, I hope we have this, uh, this direct snap to Solman here because that's a heck of a play. Yeah. A big call there by head coach Steve Rasso. We thought they may go, at least I said, maybe they'll go for it. And Solman was the up back and he gained six yards. Incidentally, you know, that, did not catch, that didn't catch Wayne asleep either. Two players pointed at Solman on that. So they've seen that in film somewhere. Arling's open, oh. and Mooney's pass just carries a little bit too high. So St. X with a great trick play there to pick up the first down. Eric Arling did a great job to work his way through traffic and look at Mooney. He says, I still have confidence you can pull him in. And that ball just carries a little bit over. Well, on that, on that shot, a little way over the head of Eric Arling. The wind has really picked up here. It's been swirling all night long, and it looks like right now we're not sure which way it's going. That flag keeps whipping back and forth. Coming a little bit out of the southwest now. Here's Solman, Solman takes the deep handoff, and he's hit. Ryan Acne, first man to hit him, and there's number two, Carl Hayden, also Hayden in there. Was, Hayden was there before Solman got his feet planted. Watch this come up here as Solman tries to work his way through, and that's the end of the third quarter with the Wayne Warriors 28 and the St. Xavier Bombers 14. And St. X, Dave, with a third and 10 critical series here for the Bombers. The uh, 12 minutes seems like a, a, a very long period of time in some ways, but right now, that 12 minutes is controlled by Wayne. It leads by 14, and uh, that makes that a, a short 12 minutes. Xavier has got to score very early in this 12 because Wayne has managed to control the tempo right. here in the second half even. Xavier has not been able to bring the momentum shift that it's been looking for. And that's the big thing, that the interception by Wayne when St. Xavier in the first half wanted to make that shift to 14 to 14. The Bombers have been fighting from behind all night long, and if they could get back within one, they may be able to play their game as the defense has really stepped it up. Dave, this has been a fast ball game. It's, it's, uh, we've, only, uh, we've only been here a couple hours. This game's been going very, very fast, considering all the passing and stuff that we've seen in it. The game is playing relatively short, and it's now down to 12 minutes. Somebody's season's going to end in the next 12 minutes. Pass to Larkin here from Mooney, and Larkin's going to be knocked out of bounds. No, it's uh, or correction, that's the number 11, Randy Newsom. Yeah. Newsom's going to step out on the 38, and that's going to bring up a fourth and three. And you got to think the Bombers will go for it from here. Yeah. I would say that uh, they don't have a lot of choice in the matter at this point. Good catch by Newsom. He's going way out with Jeff Buning. Mooney, about two steps behind the line of scrimmage. Solman picks up the blitz. Lots of, Mooney's going to have to get white shirts coming. And the pass. It's completed. It's complete. Now where's the mark going to be? Is, looks like to it's Michael at the yard line. First down, Bombers. First down. A pickup of three and a half, and that may Boy, be that's, exactly that's what called getting, Xavier That's needs. called getting it right at the, on the money, isn't it? <laughs> what a that's, catch that's by close. Michael Larkin as he had to go way down. <laughs> Jeez. So the drive is still alive for St. X. It's critically important that they score here and that they score as quickly as possible as they're down 14. Shotgun formation. 
Oh, Mooney. excuse me. No, Mooney was under the center, right? He's got Buting open, and Buting can't haul it in. <laughs> As Mooney had Jeff Buting open on the eight-yard line, and that's one of those little things you don't know about. You know, regular Nick Larson is in there. I was going to say, that's just what I was going to say. This is when the, the missing of that, that uh, the Larson's a senior this year. Uh, and, and that's where the, having that regular receiver in there makes a difference. Just a oh oh boy, that's tough. One. That's tough. That was a that was a well thrown ball. So the sophomore coming through here for the Bombers, Marty Mooney with Steve Solman behind him, second and ten from about the 35 yard line, and Saint X losing by 14. Hand off to Solman, picks his holes well. Steve Solman, a great block on the outside by Michael. Michael Larkin, Larkin got a super a block down there. 15-yard pickup, and he's driven out of bounds by John Hollins. Those two ought to go into business together they because they really work well together. I can see a Solman-Larkin uh, or Larkin-Solman law firm. These guys to make it happen for you. Well, talk about tandems that make it work. What about Hollins and Hayden on defense? They are making St. Xavier earn their yardage. They sure are. They Solman sure is the are. deep back. Harrington is the up back. Larkin is split out to the right. Buning split out left. Buning runs a nice pattern. Arling's down the middle. That pass is thrown over Arling to Michael Larkin. And nice try by Michael on the play, but he just couldn't pull it in as Will Allen was on the defense. Let's see what the, uh, looking down here to see what Wayne has put on the field. They've got defensive linemen back in now. They looks like they're going to go in this area of the field. They're going to try and match up strength with strength. They've got it. Well, they've only got one, two. The rest of them are linebackers. Again, they're going to try and, and, and use their flexibility and quickness. Solman's in the slot. There's a fumble in the backfield. Mooney made a good play just to pick it up, but then he's dropped by number 88. Ray Bond, Bond on the stop. We're gonna see Bond come through from the left side here from behind Mooney. St. Xavier is gonna be stuck here with the third down. They're back on the 29 yard line. It's about a third and 19. It's time to get the Dave Bean playbook out. This. <laughs> Not too many don't of these have, in don't there. Have, don't have very much left in that one. Uh, I've seen uh, Last Xavier time they did a screen pass. Arling on the catch. Arling tries to shake one tackler, and he got it down to the 15-yard line. And that'll make it fourth and five. That's what you need to do. Yeah, the, the pressure keeps coming up the middle uh, here, and, and, and the pass... Pass routes have got to be shorter pass routes. We've got to, they've got to be looking underneath because uh, Wayne is really covering deep quite well. John Hollins in on the stop. It's fourth and a very long five. They're on the 15 yard line. They're down 14 points. Moving Mooney back. with some time. Scott Perazzo, he better turn it upfield, and he didn't turn it upfield. Tom Perazzo, as Wayne holds. And the Warriors will take over first and 10. Davey went a little bit to the sideline. He couldn't turn upfield. So the junior tailback is caught for no gain on the play. Mooney looking, looking, flushed out of the pocket, drops it off. That's, a, that's an outlet pass, too, Dave. Uh, that's a that's definitely an outlet pass. Billy Hackett, who Billy made Hackett, the interception. who made that remarkable interception, is uh, Billy on the spot. Stops well, the Bombers dead cold there, and now the Warriors will try to run the clock. Well, theoretically, except the last time. Oh, we he's thought going they were deep. Run. Well, well he's taking this down. time. There's no there's no escape this time. Pat Ross, number Pat 66. Ross is in here and this time there's no escaping for Jones pump fake they both go on the fly pattern and watch Ross just overpowers and puts him down second and about 12. I'm clean. I'm clean. <laughs> 
Scheidt looking to There's come up the middle switch. and blitz. There's Tucker. Tucker breaks Squirms, three breaks tackles. Two or three tackles. Brings it out to about the 22, maybe the 23-yard lines. A good handoff by Jones there to Tucker, and it'll be third and about five. Kelly inserted back into the lineup, finally makes the stop. Watch Tucker break a few tackles here. He's, Keep moving he's slippery. Forward. He's hard to bring down. And again, there's a lot of arm tackling going on out there. A lot of reaching, a lot of hands on the jerseys. Not a real good, solid hit. The Wayne Warriors 28, the St. Xavier Bombers 14. You see the clock kicking down towards eight minutes. His Collins was completed. left alone, and that's going to be a first down out over the 30-yard line as there was blown coverage by the Bombers there as Jones hit Hollins wide open, and Brian Heisman makes it. I'm not sure where the coverage is on this. Look at this. And the coverage just kind of... No one there. I guess somebody there, must there have was slipped a, They were given the a lot of cushion. I think I think they were giving him a cushion. I think they were looking for a, a deeper route or something because there was a lot of cushion over there. First and ten on the 30-yard line for the Uber Heights Wayne Warriors. Eric Scheidt coming up on the line. There's penalty markers on the play, and I'm not sure about this one, Dave, if he crossed the plane or if Wayne jumped again. Get back out. Encroachment. Encroachment. Yep. Encroachment against St. X. It looked I the So it'll be first and five from about the 36 yard line. That clock keeps ticking down. The St. Xavier fans know they need to get this ball back. They have Seven the capability minutes. of Gosh scoring. Sakes. Boy, that thing is this clock. I, I have a hard time thinking that it has stopped. It seems like but, the quarter just started and, and here we're down to 730 in the fourth. This is Waycross Community Media's coverage of the Xavier Wayne playoff game. Tucker gets it up to about the 40-yard line, so it's going to be third and maybe a very short one. Third and less than one. They're going to mark him at about the 41-yard line as Ferguson makes the stop. And this is exactly what the Warriors want to do, pick up yardage, keep that clock moving. With a big back by like Tucker, you have to think he's going to get the ball here. But Jones can really roll out also. Yes, Jones has really did, has been uh, a lot of the problem this week. And you know that's something they may have picked up from the Moeller game last week because Reichard uh, of uh, Moeller got a lot of yardage last week. Xavier covered every, all the receivers well, but they couldn't cover the quarterback as well. And and, and that you've seen there a couple broken plays tonight. Well, Tucker carried that one, and Rosing and Ross make the stop, and they're going to... Going to measure. Third and less than a yard here for the Warriors. Well, I guess they're not going to measure. Third down. Jones under center. Jones trying Takes to push forward. Sneak. And this one's going to depend on the I'll tell you what, mark. I don't think, well, we'll see. we have to see. But I, I didn't see the line surge. There were a lot of people down low there. Jones tried to carry in up high. Can't see from, there's so many bodies. I got to feel they're going to call for a measurement on this. Yep, they're going to call for a measurement on this one and stop Eric the clock. Scheid. Eric Scheid was down in there playing root hog. Just look at everybody get down, and he's hit. That's Eric Scheid. He's hit that behind Scheid the line did, of That Scheid got him at the ankle. Right. So, like I said, it's going to depend on the mark, and they're short. Well, we can't see. They're short. Yes, they they're are short. short. They they're short a, by an inch. They got a good mark, and they're short. Well, it's fourth down. You're, you're in the driver's seat, Coach. What are you going to do? You're going to go for it? Well. You're going to punt. He may try to just pull him off sides here. He's going to go for it. And why not keep the clock rolling? And you've only got half an inch to go. Sometimes this is the place when you uh, get those big breakouts, too. He's oh, going to come Jones. around in. Jones comes around, comes just around, slides, slides down. down got the, the first. first down. So Derek Jones, the Bombers had to clog the middle, and Jones... Great play there by the senior quarterback. That's called taking what they Fourth. give you. 
that, that that's preparation too. Oh, now that's not something you just do. You don't go out and draw that up on the on the on the on the turf. Well, what did we say in the first half? Success is when preparation meets opportunity, and the Wayne That's Warriors right. are taking that That's opportunity right. tonight. And they have been opportunistic. They, every time that an opportunity has presented itself to them, they've taken it. First and 10 Warriors. They're at their own 42. Hand off to Tucker. He breaks it through. Artist Tucker still going. And Tucker goes down to the bomber 41 yard line before Nick Lyle makes the stop. Ernest Tucker on the big run and the Wayne Warriors with their speed and right now their power. He bursts through here. Oh boy. There. What a hole. Uh, Smith just got really manhandled. It, 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 it was actually he was held and, and rolled to the outside. But <laughs> gee, many gosh. Heisman and Scheidt went to the other side to fill in the hole, and that left Tucker a huge spot on the 41-yard line. So it'll be first and 10, Wayne, at the St. Xavier 41. Even the most faithful Bomber fans would admit this is dire at this point. Great stop underneath, though, by the Bombers. Oh, almost, do you see that ball flipped up in the air there by Tucker, yeah. and he pulled it back in. Well, as a matter of fact, Dave, some of the, the stalwarts are, are departing at this point, which is pretty unusual. There's only 436 left in the quarter, however, or in the game. Wayne's going to take it. Wayne's going to take this time out as, as how they mark this off. It'll be second and eight. And right now, if they protect the ball, this is their ball game, Dave Bean. Yep. Uh, one more, one more first down. If uh, Wayne can, can come up with one more first down, I think they, I think they can lock this game. But. On the other hand, we have seen again and again that Xavier, St. Xavier has distinctly the capacity to score from long range. And, uh, oh, we still, well, there's still time on that clock. There still is the opportunity. Well, there's 436 remaining here, Dave, as the Wayne Warriors are ahead 28 to 14. The St. Xavier Bomber defense has played valiantly here in this second half, but the offense has not been able to get on track. An opportunistic Wayne Warrior team has taken advantage of everything that has been given to them, block punts, penalties, interceptions, and right now they're trying to run this clock out as they've got second and eight at the St. Xavier 38. This is Hogan. This, this defense the, looks tired, Dave. They've yeah, been out there a, been long there a long time, time tonight. I was going to say that very thing. The, the, Wayne, Wayne is on the verge of the biggest, probably the biggest win in their, their team's history, certainly in their recent history. And uh, uh, Xavier just, has never seemed to get right into this ball game. This tonight. is not the same St. Xavier team we've seen the last seven weeks. This looks a little bit like the Bomber team that held on and eked out a victory at Cathedral, but they just, they're not firing on all cylinders tonight, and you hate to yeah. see your season end that way. Yeah. And they're really going to have to hunker down here. Hand off to Tucker, or Hogan on the stop, and Hogan's going to maneuver forward. It's going to be marked down at about the. See where they mark this ball. Pat Ross got the first hit in there on that on that play. Third down on the play. Timeout. St. Zay. Fourth down on the play. It'll be fourth and one. And and we've seen the Warriors go for this before. I mean, they're, they're probably they're going. Yeah, for they're the going for it. They want to. They, they basically. Well. They're going to turn the, the ball over. Out. Sure, you can either run the clock out or go go for the end zone. And uh, uh, what you know, there's very little that uh, it appears that uh, Xavier can do offensively. It's just a it's just a real struggle this evening. We're down to 3:47. Coach Rasso, if you've got the answer in there under that under that uh, hat, uh, now's the time to pull it out. We need two quick ones right now. He's been we'll saying all week long that, that the speed of the Wayne Warriors has really worried him. And he also, you know, was worrying about the emotional toll that the Bombers have been yeah. through. You play Moeller, you play Elder, you go up, you play Cleveland St. Ignatius. You but take those, on, are the, those are the very things yeah. that are supposed to get you prepared to prepared do this. Prepared for this. That's right. And then last week they play Moeller. 
and they have an outstanding first three quarters yep. and then in the third quarter a little bit of a letdown there but they were up 49 to 14 tonight they just have not been able to get on track yep. they've had three interceptions three key penalties and uh, those you just can't play a sloppy game yeah, they're, Wayne they're wants to call oh, they jumped it's going to be fourth it's and sixth be. as Wayne wanted a timeout but they jumped on yeah, this yeah. far sideline near sideline this the, near side is line. 67 isn't it? it is 87 yeah that's uh Antoine uh, Anton Walker oh there's Mr. Walker back in there Our, he's only got eight catches now, on the season but there's 16 yard average now we're going to see if Wayne got a timeout Dave before they called that penalty or not dead ball foul ball start so he didn't get the the timeout called in time it'll be fourth and six We've seen Michael Larkin score in seven seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. You know, uh, there's, there's enough time for two scores. Uh, the problem is, is that Xavier has not given indication that it wants to move the ball that well. And more importantly, Wayne has not given indication that he's going to give it up that easy either. Well, we're at fourth and six here. The Warriors are going to take a timeout. But Coach Jay Minton and his... Uh, is uh, Wayne Warriors have uh, come in here and set the, well, certainly the southern part of the state on its ear, and probably a lot of the state's going to be set on its ear. Oh, exactly. The St. Xavier Bombers, the Cleveland Papers have basically said if St. Xavier keeps playing like they did, they'll be state champs. Well, tonight is not the team that we've seen play many of these past weeks, and part of that is due to what the Wayne Warriors' speed is yep. doing to them. Yep. Wayne is, this whole idea of going with six linebackers and then bringing in, you know, a couple other defensive men, the, the shifts that are taking place that's just giving the Bombers a little bit of problems here, and it's enough that with the mistakes St. X has made, without the mistakes, we're at a 14-14 game, and everyone yes. is still sitting in their seats yes. saying, boy, this is the greatest $5 ticket right. in town. Right, Well, it still is. Still a great party. <laughs> the Warriors, it still is the best deal in town. The Warriors going to punt here. Nobody's back for St. X. And the Bombers are going to have to start way deep in their own territory unless oh that my thing goodness. really oh. skedaddles. Oh. The two-yard line. Oh. As St. Xavier oh. got caught that time as they had nobody back. And now, watch this as the Warriors go back. And, when, and they just quickly snap it back there. And they're going to down it about the two, uh, one yard line, I think not it's even one. the two. So now you have to go 99 yards and get the ball back, and, and Marty Mooney's really going to be under fire here. That's uh, Brian Ankney. The, the man we guy, called all they, night. I'll tell you what. Wayne has the capacity to put six guys into this game, and Bad they keep snap. doing everything. Mooney just going to take it out of the end zone, and that... That's, that's, uh, that's basically that's the ball more. game. That's 30 to 14 now. It's a two score game. And I'm not, there's nothing Mooney could do on that play. Nope. It, that he, ball, that he ball took, took it him out, out of the yeah, end zone. Exactly. It, it looked like he may have been able to come left, but that ball was moving so fast. And that might be just the kind of play that summarizes what's been happening to St. That, ball, that ball went almost through his legs. Now St. Xavier will try an onside kickoff from the 20-yard line. But now they're... Right. The free kick will come here for St. X. Well, it's been a nice run, Dave. It's uh, been a great season for St. X. A, a lot of questions, you know, especially when Matt Williams graduated. Sure. And, you knew you had good receivers coming back. You knew Solman was back. They answered the questions on the offensive line. John Sullivan making a few, you know, corrections there. And Kyle Ralph and Jeremy Imbus, some youngsters stepping up. And this defense has been good. But tonight, Dave, the one thing that they've avoided in the past weeks, penalties, interceptions, yeah, mental mistakes. mistakes. They just couldn't avoid tonight. And if they watched the films of Elder Oak Hills, they would have learned you can't do that in the playoff game. Yeah. That's the, you know, again, it's it's a matter of, uh, oh, there, there's so many things. But, yes, it's mistakes that caught the Bombers tonight. Uh, and those are mistakes that were controllable mistakes. Those weren't 
Uh, not to take anything away exactly. from Wayne, because Wayne really has played in it. Wayne is, this is one of the right. best prepared exactly. teams you could ever hope to see. You talked about Jay Minton and what his staff was getting ready to do this week, and clearly, They've looked at what few weaknesses existed for St. X, and they've exploited those. Onside kick Absolutely. coming to the left here. Oh, nice up in the air. Good onside Tipped kick. Up. The ball is really bouncing around. That was well, well, well executed. Beautifully Xavier done got by St. Xavier. That thing was tipped around by lots and lots and lots of players. They're going to have to unpile. Oh. And number four picks it up for the Wayne Warriors. Will Allen. Will Allen. Dave, Who you know, scored the opening right. touchdown on the block. Watch this come up here. Now, nobody takes Allen out. They should have just leveled him. And instead, he comes back in yep. to make the reception. He should have just been leveled the minute he touched the ball. But, you know, I, I said that this Wayne team reminded me of Pat Mancuso's yep. Princeton Vikings, and yep. this is what they did. Yep. Just hang around, hang around, wait for the big play, get it, and then not beat themselves. And that's why they had such a successful program. Centerville beat this team 35-14, to 14, and I've got to think that, that Wayne did not play their best game that night. And the Elder Panthers may have trouble with this speed. Tucker breaks two tackles. Tucker is still, still going. Right. And Joe Stevens makes the tackle on the 18-yard line. So right now, first and 10 for the Wayne Warriors. 322 remaining, and they want to make a statement to the rest of the state here. See if they can push this in. The Bombers looking to strip the ball, and that's why you see a few missed tackles, and then Tucker just puts his head down and goes. Stahl coming in to help out Joe Stevens there. St. X got itself, Dave, in a 14-point hole, then a 21-point hole, and just could never dig themselves out. No, it, that it, played it, into like, the strength of that Wayne defense. Like you, like you said earlier, it, it's a matter where the offense never caught fire. It never really got on track. And uh, Wayne has just disrupted everything. Ernest Tucker on the carry here. Tucker will go down to about the 10. He, and it'll be about second and two. Chris Stahl made the tackle as that's an eight yard pickup. And the Bomber fans are beginning to file out now as we're heading down to about that two minute and 45 second mark. A great run for Coach Steve Rasso and his St. Xavier Bombers as they're 10-0 coming into this game. And the Wayne Warriors prepared as they knew how via the pass. They said we're going to live by the pass. But more importantly, their defense with their speed shut down what no other team could do, the speed receivers of St. X and Steve Solman. Oh. Tucker breaks two tackles. Tucker, Tucker broke, bounced off and still kept his feet under him and kept moving forward. To the five picked yard up the, line. Picked up another first down. First and goal, watch Tucker here. Good line surge and Tucker's just gonna break a tackle off Mike Ferguson here. Ferguson was Ferguson's going for got, the ball. He got his leg, but the <laughs> by then Tucker has already bounced and gone again. First and goal for the Wayne Warriors. Well, th again, uh, as you said, Dave, the, these guys have done well this year. It's, it's, they have had a good year. The, you, you can't measure the season in the result of this game any more than last year's season could have been measured simply in the result of the Kent McKinley game. Uh, it's, it's a season. It's, it's a, it's a, it's an experience. And Tucker's, Tucker's in, in for a, a, the score. Ernest Tucker scores on a five-yard run. It looked like they may have put him up, and it's 36. To 14, Wayne. Watch Tucker here just drive from about the one yard line. It looks like he stopped. He keeps those feet moving and reaches that ball over for the Warrior touchdown. But you also see again the Warrior linemen are in and under uh, the the Xavier the Xavier defenders. Uh, they're in and underneath them, consistently underneath them. The excellent fundamentals, just excellent fundamentals. The extra point attempt is good, and the Warriors 37, the Bombers 14. You talked about what Jay Minton meant to this team as the head coach. He's 18 and three in two seasons, now moving to 19 and three, and he's won two playoff games, something that no other coach here at Uber Heights Wayne has done. 
lot of people are going to be looking at this young man. They went. Now, now this is important. Uh, they went on a national search to find a coach to come in here to wait. They went all the way to Coral Gables and hired him two weeks before the season started last year. He came in here last summer and took him through what had to be well he, he, what he could have lost he must have lost a couple games last year lost one this year and that's it and, and here he is uh, guys guys done a great job our hats go off to him uh, and, and the entire uh, Wayne operation they've done a, an excellent job have a lot to be proud of it's so hard to predict high school sports uh, I mean last week you know uh, the St. Xavier Bombers trying to defend their cross-country title yeah. ran a very very, very good race and, and lost by 40 points, one of the biggest margins in the state in recent years to a Brunswick team that everyone knew was good and then just really exploded on everybody. Yeah. Larkin will take it at the 10. So even with the great effort by the Bombers, they still went down to their biggest defeat of the year, but it's not like they could do much more. They, they, they ran as well as they could and, and you know, when you look at, at what Coach Steve Rasso and these Bombers have done this year, this has been an outstanding season. Michael Larkin will go to probably a Division I school as a kickback return specialist. Steve Solman, Nick Larson, Eric Arling, Nick Lyle, all Division I players uh, for the Bombers. You look at Steve Solman breaking his brother Scott Solman's record, and, and, and what an outstanding career that young man has had here at St. Xavier and, and the highlights that he's brought oh, they brought to they the brought so fans. much entertainment, so much uh, uh, enthusiasm and, and, and fun to the and entire really, the entire uh, Xavier community. And not enough can be said for the great job that the coaching staff has done, and the, the concern, the care that uh, that they have given these kids. The, the number of hours that have gone in that these coaches have spent watching film, training, everything else that's gone on. And, and you look to the future, Dave, and you see four or five returning linemen. You see sophomore Marty Mooney returning at quarterback. Jeff Buning, Tom Perazzo coming back. You've got Pat Ross and, and uh, Keith Rosing. And, you know, our hats go off to that staff. On a, on a related note, St. Xavier's volleyball coach Donna Meckley today winning her second straight women's volleyball title with Mount Notre Dame. I was and our just, hands I was, off to Donna and Mount Notre Dame and winning the volleyball. That's today. right. Roger Bacon's women uh, ended up with their uh, a second place in the state uh, today, and, and uh, that's been uh, that was a good season for the Bacon ladies also. And, and Dave, you know, you look at this season, and, and I remember back to that ceremony that, that St. X was able to have in their gym where Cheerios pronounced them one of Ohio's team champions, not just because of their record on the football field, but because of the outstanding uh, average of 24 to 34 National Merit finalists right. here and the service that these young men do. That's right. Uh, the whole program. And, and really, as you look at it, you know, you and I have covered a lot of high school sports with Waycross and throughout the state. When you look up and down for a program that has 11 teams, it's hard to beat St. X for an overall program throughout this state. Well, you know, and, and, and Dave, from the, from the broader perspective also, high school athletics, high school activities, are the are the greatest bargain there is this is where young people become adults this is where they learn the the, the capacity to work together for common objectives and, and to sacrifice and, and to to work hard for a for a a, a particular common thing uh, collins took that punt there dave and we've got a penalty marker, and let's watch what's coming up here. But you're right. It's all about doing that teamwork, right. objectives, the lessons that these young men learn. Oh, Joe that Stevens was a mistake. going to be whistled right there. He was just being blocked off of the play. And frustration. That's a frustration for Joe. Yeah. And, and, you know, Joe got flagged earlier in the game for that for that roughing the kicker. And, You're and absolutely that, right. And that interception is really what turned this game around for the Wayne Warriors. Uh, two critical mistakes on the bottom. Well, one critical mistake, and then just a tremendous play by Billy Hackett, who then stopped St. X at 28 to 14 on fourth and four. 
Well, we're we're down to the final minute. Uh, the Wayne Warriors appear to be uh, no, they're they not they're not appearing to be. They are. They are going to walk out of this with their second ever Ohio High School Division One playoff victory. Uh, who knows? The Warriors have got Warriors, confidence Warriors, in themselves now. Hey, you know, it's it's everyone's been talking about St. X or Elder, St. X or Elder being the state champs. Yeah. And uh, Elder had a tough game on its hand with Centerville. We have not heard anything since then, uh, since the original score was done. And I don't know if we're going to hear it before the end of this game. The Warriors are just going to run this clock out here, downing the ball. And I don't think St. X is going to call a timeout. Steve Rassa knows that the game's over. And let's try to get a few seniors in, maybe for a snap or two. And so a great game tonight for the Uber Heights Wayne Warriors as they come out of here with a convincing 37 to 14 victory. To the St. Xavier Bombers and their coaching staff, head coach Steve Rasso and all the other coaches, and to the seniors, we say thanks for a great year and for four great years here at St. X. It's been a pleasure watching you and seeing all the excitement that you've brought along. That's going to be the final play, and head coach Steve Rasso leads his Bombers out as they will line up to shake hands here with the Uber Heights Wayne Warriors. And we'll try to have a few highlights in the second half as Wayne pulls the big upset 37 to 14 here at Dayton's Welcome Stadium. Well, this is a, one of the tough things in, in sport right now is as the Bombers and the, and the Wayne Warriors mix in the middle of the field, congratulating one another. Uh, it's one of the great things about high school athletics, but it's one of the tough ones. Okay, we're going to come up with the second half events. We have a hard time maybe calling them highlights, but uh, we have Mooney back with a pass. And, oh, what a great defensive play. Carl by Hayden. A thorn in the side all night long. As he stepped in front of Lark. As Jones fakes with a right into the Tucker. right into the uh, the middle of the line. A nice pass completed to right there. Uh, that's that's uh, John, John Holly. Uh, Xavier defender slipped. Here's Watch this pass to Michael Larkin. Long pass to Larkin. This is a 73-yard pass play. That will Larkin's set. out. Steve Solman will get the handoff here and find a hole where there is no hole, and then he'll pick up a big block from Eric Arling, who just leveled and runs his man. Through. We end up running, running right through. Uh, number two, Carl Hayden that time. That's one time Hayden didn't stop us. And, and this, this is kind of symptomatic of, of what happened to St. X all night. Just misfiring the there. That, uh, and then from this point on, the Warriors kind of run the clock down, and then Ernest Tucker is going to take off for about a five-yard carry and watch him just go from he about did. the one-yard line in. Once he's, he's hit with two guys at a yard out and, and drives on in. Now we're spreading out, and you can see head coach Steve Rasso going to talk to his St. Xavier Bombers down on the left side here of Welcome Stadium, and there's the final score. Certainly not what a lot of people expected. But Dave, I, I really believe that tonight the Wayne Warriors did what they needed to do and, and forced action on St. X and St. X was not able to do what they had done all year long. So the Warriors will go on and face either Centerville or Elder. I want to thank all the people here at Waycross, especially our director tonight, Tony Suarez, Kevin Dye helping him as a technical director. Hugh Staples, Staples providing replay. those replays. Melinda Hartung on the graphics. Our camera operators were Glenn Hartung, Michael, Michael Chip, Chip, Steve, Steve Allen, Allen, Casey McNamara. I'm, I'm Dave B. And I'm Dave Eby. And it's uh, Steve Bradley worked with us our last couple games. Tom Schneider was our production assistant. Chip Bergquist, the executive director of Waycross. If you like what you've seen tonight, go on ahead, give us a call and volunteer on future telecasts. We want to thank everyone at Waycross for what they've done for St. Xavier Bomber football this season. Good night.
This has been a production of the Waycross Community Media, the access partnership of Forest Park, Green Hills, and Springfield Township. Opinions expressed are those of the program's participants who do not necessarily represent the Community Programming Board, volunteers and staff of the Waycross Media Center, the community governments, or the cable company. If you have questions regarding this program or if you would like to participate in the activities of Waycross Community Media, call 825-2429 or write Waycross Community Media, 2086 Waycross Road, Forest Park, Ohio, 45240.